Hello and welcome to uh, the coverage of the 2018 World Orienteering Championships. We've got the uh, women's relay today. Uh, my name's Catherine Betts. I'm joined by Ines Mertz. We're going to bring you all the action. Well, we had the women's relay just start about 30 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago. And we're going to bring you uh, the rest of the action from that and all the action from the men's relay. We have moved out from, we had started in Riga earlier on in the competition. We've moved out to Segulda and now just gone a little bit further north and east of our middle distance competition to uh, Tureda where there are all these sculptures and you can, as you can see and the castle and this uh, area of grass is where our arena is based today and the competitors will go pretty close to the castle here. Go and alarm some more tourists, so thankfully not as many as there were in the centre of Riga for our sprint relay, no, for our sprint final. And those pictures also give you a little bit of a clue about what the terrain looks like today. Well, it is very hot here in uh, in Latvia, 30 degrees, 38% humidity. Uh, it is roasting out there and uh, the competitors are getting a sweat on even before uh, they've started the course so it's tough conditions out here for fast and furious racing hopefully a little bit cooler um, in the forest and this is the map yeah and uh, we have uh, quite a different map compared to the middle distance the individu individual the middle distance um, it's much more features and it's more slope running here so I think uh, everything is a little bit more distinct, it's easier to read all the way to the controls and we have quite many forkings. This first part, that it's quite a difference to the second part where you only have slope running more or less. Um, this first part you have a little bit, uh, uh, many streams and many features to read with and then second part mostly about uh, running in the slope and we've seen some problems there from some of the runners, I'm sure we'll see that later. And then we have one long route choice from Control number 12 to 13, and uh, once you're at control number 13, you're very close to the finish. Um, no difficulties on this last two or three controls there. No, it'll be about who has still got the energy to run. Uh, but the start list goes in order of the results from last year's World Championships. Yeah, and uh, start number one, Sweden, also a big favorite for today. Um, Switzerland for sure, another big favorite. Russia, Finland, they, ho they used to have good relay teams, so usually they are fighting for the medals as well. Now as we go further down the start list, we can see there are 29 teams being represented here today. Many runners, uh, especially in some of the lower ranked teams, it's their first competition, their first uh, race of this World Championships. And here, this was earlier. So all the top teams lining up on the start list first. <laughs> and this was how they got their first chance to look at the map and were able to go out of the arena and they could go past the start control. This is the start control here and get a first glimpse of the challenge that awaits them. Some of them maybe be a little surprised at their first control, which is in amongst this area of buildings and uh, ponds and this very parkland area that's uh, at the castle here in Tereda. Um, before they headed out into the forest. But even the first control split up the pack. All of them here crossing, but then they have three different forking options. And of course, a reminder, after all of the athletes have run, they will have, between them, done all of the options. So even if they had a maybe a better forking originally, then you'd, you only do that one once. You have to do... Uh, the longer ones, your teammates have to do the longer ones. And this is how exactly they were split up here. Mm, they had a very easy control to the first one. It was mostly to split the field and uh, let them later decide for different route choices to the second control. And both first and the second controls are four controls. Yes, this was most of the runners here were going for the C option. And this is what happened. This is how they split up. We think A was the 
uh, quickest route choice, the quickest uh, forking, and that's what Switzerland and Eleanor Ross had to begin with. And you can see them all splitting up here, being able to use the open areas to then find, uh, fight their way through the green. And we saw them both at controls three and four, but here we have some difficulties. Mm, we have seen that Switzerland was very distinct out from the control. Um, she had a plan, uh, Eleanor was how to run to control E, and we saw that Finland and Russia, they had the same forking, but they didn't plan the route choice to number five, so they lost quite a t some time by just following to the other forking. And then here we have a route choice. Um, we think that control G might be the best one because you can run around and you have a very nice entrance there to the control. And uh, control F is maybe the one you can miss as uh, we see Norway doing. She did a parallel mistake there. She was on the left side of the stream and thought she was uh, by the stream more south of the control. That's why she did the mistake there. And I think also a mistake uh, from the Czech Republic, Theresa Jansikova running the first leg for them, going too far down. You're not really sure. Maybe her GPS is not very accurate at that place. Or she re no, she really is down there. Yes, that's quite a big mistake. So a couple of the favourite teams, well, ones who could be battling for... for medal or podium positions, Norway and the Czech Republic making mistakes early on, but it's mm -hmm. still Estonia leading. And this is uh, quite interesting as they yeah. have this route choice to 13. Now they're splitting up. We see Switzerland and Estonia running down and uh, around on this route choice. Actually, I didn't expect them to do that, but it seems to be quite good. It's quite an extreme route choice. Uh, I expected them more to go as Sweden is doing. Um, seems to be a good option. Well, we can probably catch up with them at Control 13. We know we definitely have a, a split time for this point. But now Estonia and Switzerland, they have to go up this hill, whereas uh, Sweden will just be able to run around the top. These were the standings um, on leg one after 3.1 kilometers of running. I think that must be at Control number 12 with Switzerland only 20 seconds behind Estonia, who had uh, some, some of the good forkings early on. Actually, so did Switzerland as well. And then uh, Sweden leading a pack that are uh, a minute behind. Finland and Russia both in there as well. But we know, we've seen some mistakes from Norway, who are down in 13th place there, and the Czech Republic six minutes down in 20th position. Mm, and we see that uh, now they are up on the hill, Sweden, Russia, Finland. Um, but they have to run all the way around there, past control number 14. I don't think it's an option to go down in the valley and up there. It's too much climbing, it's too bushy uh, down by the stream. Uh, so either you go all the way around the red one, or you make a middle version between the green one and the blue one. Yeah, so well, the green, the green one's obviously the shortest, going most direct, but it does have a lot of climb, especially mm. if you go down and back up. I think the, the beginning of, of the green one is quite okay, but once you're up the hill, you have to, to ch change your route to the one around, as uh, Sweden is doing, or uh, as we have seen Russia and Finland doing, actually, the whole way. This is Helen Bergman looking for the control number 13. Mm. It's a bit more further away there. Castle. So she has some meters to go. I think we will see Eleanor Ruas first. First, yeah, here. Yep. And the control is there to the right. To her left. It's it's just come on. It's not a very difficult <laughs> control, actually. <laughs> but she's just coming from the climbing and uh, <laughs> lacking some oxygen there. So, if you think... Maybe route choice from Sweden, actually not bad, not a bad mm -hmm. one and well executed if she was able to now catch up and be only six seconds behind. Anne will probably be feeling a little bit fresher having yeah. been running on the flat. She should have some advantage now for the next part, at least for, let's say, the next minute. And Stasia Rudnaya from Finland and Sofia Heinen complete the top five. They go back around the castle, actually only a few seconds in it. Very good start for Estonia. Ani Karima, very experienced runner. <laughs> we 
still have four of the biggest favorites here in the first, within one minute, more or less. Uh, Switzerland, Sweden, Russia and Finland. Yeah, and these are the trackings. They've got a little bit of forking to do left until they get to the finish and can hand over to the second leg runners. But let's just flag up Denmark and uh, is it Norway under there as well, who are trailing behind at the moment. Mm -hmm. And now we have a forking to control 15. Um, we will only see that forking on the first and second leg and then on the last leg they will go straight from the 14th to the last control. Either way, Switzerland and Sweden are split up on these, fi these final couple of controls. I think it's probably... Mm, I don't know which one it's, which one I it's better it's to have. I think it's quite the same. I think it's quite the same. Okay, let's see if we can see coming up the hill next. And it's Virag Vaila who's uh, leading the Hungarian team out. She also was uh, first leg on the sprint relay as well and had a good result. But this is Helena Bergman for Sweden now running on this very short grass. It's just park style. And uh, Elena Roos has got there a little bit ahead. So Switzerland and Sweden, the two favourites for this women's relay, come home after the first leg in one and two. So Switzerland, the European champions. Elena Roos to hand over to Julia Jakob, who's going to go out on the second leg. Elena Bergman will hand over to Carolyn Olsen. And we also have Estonia as well. And Nika Rima will hand over to Evely Karsaku. Julia Jakob gets on her way. And the gap is nine seconds. Elena Bergman will hand over to Carolyn Olsen, who's eager to get out into the forest. We also have the Russians and the Finns here ready to change over as well. They're 19 and 22 seconds behind. So, the next is Hungary. The team Latvia punched uh, the previous uh, uh, control in the seventh place. Uh, in seven, two minutes, uh, minutes. So, the top five teams, all within half a minute. And uh, that relay was brutal. See the leading to the first leg, 36 minutes, 56. So a little bit longer than our expected uh, winning times per leg. And here's our next group, including Denmark, Britain and USA, Ukraine and uh, Austria as well. Yeah, it's a lot of climbing in this course. Uh, it's very warm. Uh, it's sweaty out there. Um, it's not. It, it's a little bit as it was in the Middle Eastens. You have to fight all the way. There's a lot of fallen trees and uh, stuff on, on, the, on the ground. So you have to lift your feet and you have to jump over and, and climb over stuff all the way. So it's it's quite tough out there. But they are. That's kind of what they're expecting. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's well, but still, it's it's tough. Yep, definitely. And. Hungarian team with Rode Vila next to reach our final control and you could, could see the, the two runners there waiting uh, to get going on the second leg. Latvian Laravika is waiting to be given the cue to set off on her course. So, uh, Gina Bertotti is next to start for Hungary. will be down in sixth spot, but that's a, uh, that's a podium position at the moment, but over two minutes down, 2.16 down on the leading five. Mm, that's uh, Inja Dambe for Latvia. She opened the race pretty good. She was uh, within one minute behind until uh, yeah, maybe half of the course. But then she lost now quite a bit of time, almost three minutes. She is behind now. So running on him, so Inga Damba heads up the hill, handing over to Laura Vika. We've also got the Norwegian in the background, Camilla Olafsson. Missed a lot of the eighth control. 
I think she's had a reasonably decent end because she was running with uh, the Danish runner as well. And mm -hmm. just, just being able to keep up that speed at the uh, end of the course. Hand over to Marianne Anderson, who, despite one mistake, had mostly a good run on the middle distance. Looking good also, Team USA. We need to look out, of course, for the Danish team around the Falk Robo going to hand over three minutes 30 off the, off the pace. So we've got uh, Joe Shepherd from Great Britain handing over to Megan Carter Davies. Latvia, Norway, Austria, United States, Ukraine, Denmark, and Great Britain. And a very good start was for Inga Down, but then she was uh, slow. And, uh, but let's have a look now at the first stages of leg number two and Finland probably having the uh, what we think is the easiest or at least the quickest um, forking number uh, forking A and everybody else mostly got B a couple of C's as well. Mm, we can see that those uh, yellow areas there semi open areas they are quite good the runnability is good it's uh, high grass so it's no nestles or uh, thorns there uh, so those uh, I think the control a is really good to have. You have a very easy entrance there and you can build up some self-confidence in the beginning of the race. Well, Czech Republic with Theresia Nasikova having uh, multiple problems out there in the course, especially controls eight and nine. She's just punched there at the castle. Mm -hmm. Still we see that uh, Switzerland and Sweden, they are in the lead there, both uh, with control B. I don't think it really matters if you have C or B there at the second control. It's just first you pass control B and that gives you the feedback. Yeah, you're right. And if you have C and you pass control B, you usually check. You, you take a second to check that you're on your way. And yeah, it's, it's a mentally a little bit easier to have control B in this situation. And C is also a little bit further at control one as well. Mm. So you're, you've had to run a little bit further to get there. Uh, well, Finland is the first to reach control number three, mm -hmm. followed by Karin Olsen from Sweden and then Julia Jakob of Switzerland. Even after the forking, all of them very, very close together. Also have Evli Kasku from Estonia and then from Russia, Tatiana Ryabkina. those five bunching back up there as they approach control number three. Next up, we'll see them at control number four. It's between a marsh and a pond. And at, even after here, we, we saw a couple of runners uh, make some mistakes in following the other. Yeah, because right here, you have to take the decision. Will you back out from the control as Caroline Olsen is doing? Or will you continue as uh, Finland's Janoja is doing? And if you haven't taken the decision yet, if you haven't made the decision yet, then you might just follow because it's still an option, but it's not the best one. In fact, all of them have pretty much made that decision before they got there, apart mm -hmm. from uh, Maya Sinoya, who uh, leading for Team Finland. At least that's what we that's think. What we think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looked like she was just checking that route on the way out there. So, looks like Sweden has the westernmost, no, sorry, the easternmost control. But Estonia has been dragged exactly. along by the others. That's what I meant. If mm. you have control E, as uh, Sweden has, uh, the re-entrant there, then you have to go out directly, as Karlin Olsson did. And I think that Estonia, Evely Kansiko, is losing about 20, 25 seconds, even if she's going good from there. Yeah, you can really see how she's, she's been dragged to that other control mm. because she has no idea where the other forking is or even if that even that there is a forking to that control. I mean, she will have guessed by now, obviously, but definitely using time by going through the green. You can really pick up your running if you choose the way that uh, Sweden has. Yeah, and obviously she wasn't very active in her uh, map reading because uh, otherwise she would have been prepared for that. So now she... She noticed I'm uh, all alone uh, to my forking and I have to get control first. So that's why she's slowing it down there and she has to get control over the situation uh, before she can continue with offensive orienteering. 
And that's a little bit the risk for the, let's say, a little bit smaller nations. If it's always a chance if you have uh, good runners around you, but you, it, it's a risk that you miss the point where you really have to go on your own route choice. Well, Mariana Anderson is on the chase. This is control number three. We're right now also looking to see who of the next chasing group will head out of the forest next. And it is Denmark. Carolina Jitter up heading out there for Denmark. Then Carter Davies also made a little break on the rest of the group. like Austria and Anya Arbta there and so we've got uh, Ukraine and Elena Pitramova so two Americans and Tori Boris and yes. Latvia and uh, Laura Vika has been caught up we can say a good start for Norway Marianne Andersen she caught them around 40 seconds to this uh, first TV control or uh, to this point here. But this is now our arena run through and that is the gap that Carolyn Olsen has over the rest of the field. Number one, they are the defending champions. So Carolyn Olsen, after 47 minutes, is in the lead and the chase is being made by Switzerland, Julia Jakob and by Finland with Maya Sino with the Russia also there in the picture Tatiana Ryabkina running second leg for the Russian team so 16 seconds is the gap that uh, Yulia Jakob is behind Karolin Olsen and we've lost the Estonian off the back of that top five who all went through uh, reasonably close together and now we get into this part where we have seen uh, many or some of the runners missing uh, control eight and control nine um, to control eight, if you have option G, I think it's a good uh, decision to go to the south and run around the hill. If you have to control most to the west, then you can go straight over the hill. Now, we're looking at Evely Kasaku, he was uh, started out in that leading group of five in third place at the changeover but now over a minute down and you can see I think when you when you know you've made a mistake and you've lost the pack that's the impact well it's mostly that she lost the pack um, I think she was quite happy by not having to take uh, big responsibility in the group and just running in the group especially in the green parts they can they can't push very hard so it's it's good for you to just follow but once you miss the time, you have to go on your own, then you, you are not really in the race and then you have to start being active from one second to the other and that's always a risk. Well, you can see here that it's not all green. There are there are some bits of white and they actually are pretty yeah. good. But here, as you, as you can see down, this is like just how much this terrain really differs. Yeah, I think uh, we will see the runner, run the runners, the athletes run a little bit more offensive in this part of the race. Okay, let's, let's have a look at the see. replay. If you have control H, you can run around, as Kalin Olsen is doing. I think F, uh, control F is the most difficult one, difficult one, and maybe also the slowest one. Because you have to fight through the green and then to the control. We saw there uh, Tatiana Rybkina for Russia. Run, run fast uh, along the track there, but in the chasing pack, well, it's Mariana Andersen from Norway leading that chase, but she's three minutes and nine behind. How does that compare? Mm, she lost 35 seconds from the last uh, TV control. 
So 35 seconds from control four. Yeah, now she has uh, about the same gap as she had at the start. Oh, that's the top six now through. Oh, putting her up, I think. Just punch there. Always got to look out for the Danes, especially when they have Maya Alm on the team. Looks like Megan Carter Davies for the British team. Going to go into eighth spot. She lost 22 seconds from the start to this point. But now let's have a look. This is a tricky control to number eight, but uh, Karen Olsen seems to be on the right track. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite good to have control eight. You can run up to the top and then you can follow this hill she has to the left now, and uh, the control is quite good visible from this direction. Switzerland and Julia Jakob following the stream all the way up, not making the mistake that Norway did. Uh, they were just too far, too far west of the um, stream there, I think made a parallel mistake, but looks no problem for Switzerland at this point. I don't think it's a disadvantage to have control F in the very end on the third leg because it will maybe track up a little bit to that control, um, which will help. There's, it's quite dense there at the point where uh, Julia Jakob is at the moment. Well, Switzerland will have G on the final uh on the final leg. But here we are with our leader, Carolyn Olsen for Sweden, on her way to control number nine. Literally heading through the worst park tree you can possibly can. Elena Rose on the first leg, she was hesitating a lot here and missed uh, quite many seconds uh, to this control. That's the point where Annika Rima, Estonia, passed her. But here on the chase is the Russian, Ryapkina. Looking pretty strong. And this is where you've really got to keep attacking, but let's have a look. Mm, and do we see that she's too high up in the slope there? Caroline Olsson. Missing that control. Now she has to stop and it's for her it's a quite a difficult situation now. She's not really sure if she is too high or too low. I think she senses that she's too high just from the way mm. she's turning to get further down the hill, but she is lucky she can spot one of the other runners coming uh, further down in the slope. Still see she's not 100% sure. Now she saw the re-entrant there. But backing off she should have just continued some meters. Yeah. Maybe she can see the control very soon. 
we were following the Russian. He'd already punched her control number nine. She had mm -hmm. G. So Russia in the, the lead at the moment. But they did have the easiest forking there, we, we think, anyway. And we see also Switzerland with some insecurities there. Uh, we can also see Norway catching Estonia in the back here, but here, but yeah. following Switzerland. We saw also Team Finland quite much up in the slope there. Let's have a little replay of these routes there, and this is. Olsen just staying too high, but she she kept her height after crossing by the uh, by the knoll there, but, and then eventually realizing what she's doing. Finland also too high. S mm. Ah, no, but getting the control much easier. I think uh, Olsen thought that it would be the spur when she was in this uh, small hill there, and then she just kept the height. It was a bit too much up the hill. Now they are together again, Sweden and Russia. And now a uh, couple of controls to climb. So it'll be a case of who's better up the hill. Can you regain some confidence after having missed that control? And we can see further back at, at G, Norway's already got that control. Estonia flagging behind. Here's Marian Andersen. We know she's probably had a few mistakes in the forest. Was catching time and then uh, lost a little bit more just before the arena passage. But Everly Kasaku, she's looking, still looking for her control, I think. Looking for uh, F and uh, got it there. Maybe not her control. But since there are not many features in this slope, it might help her to just get <laughs> one of the features. No, it was her control, according yeah. to this map anyway. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Sweden and Carolyn Olsen going a little bit further west. You probably want to stay up and avoid most of that green. Yeah. And I mean, if we just... Uh, Look a little bit ahead to the third leg. Sweden had the best option for control number eight already, and she missed out a little bit uh, afterwards. She couldn't really use that advantage. Uh, she would have had a chance there to open a gap, and that might open up for Team Russia and Switzerland. Well, we'll have a, we have a camera at control 11, so you should be able to see who makes that first with uh, Ryabkina for Russia going faster through the white. Mm, I think it's quite unnecessary to run down to the stream there, as we see Sweden doing, because you have to climb up to the control and then you can uh, pass the green area on the eastern side. You don't have to go in there, as we see Yuli Jakob doing, but you can... Uh, I think uh, Russia Ryabkina is executing it quite well so far. Now she seems to hesitate. She might see Karlin Olsen. Well, this is this control, control number 11. Mm -hmm. And it's Ryabkina. in Russia. Yeah, most of these uh, little valleys with the streams in have a lot of the fallen trees mm. there, and that, that's what really makes it diff You want to use it as a feature to be able to run, but it's very difficult. Julia Jakob there, and uh, finally Carolyn Olsen, but 17 seconds behind after going through all the green and trying to go up the stream to get to that control. Just getting stuck there in the green by the stream 
and that's cost Carolyn Olsen the lead. Also here now it's uh, Finland, Maya Sienoya. And then I think next we're looking for Norway who've gained up, well, if not time, then definitely places on the uh, top runners in the field. And I think we can hear her already. Got high speed, has Mariana Anderson and uh, a lot of experience. Mm, she's going pretty good so far. Uh, at start it was 3 minutes and 12 seconds, now it's 1 minute and 21 seconds. Looking very good. Anderson already has a relay gold from 2009. So he's been at the uh, top stages of a relay many, many times before. It'll be interesting to see if they split up to control number 13. I highly doubt it, but... Uh of course, when the, the first leg runners came to this point, they were there was a little bit more of a gap, yeah. so you couldn't see what the runners in front of you were all doing. And yeah, and especially the visibility is not really good just there, so you don't see what the other runners chose. She seems, Kelly Nolson, she mm. seems to be confident about the running direction. And running speed, actually, considering she was third at that previous control is... Apart from going through, apart from going next to the stream, is making uh, good progress through the terrain. Mm, yeah, but that's a little bit my feeling for the whole course. She was always. It seems that she's feeling very confident with her speed, and she thinks that the other ones around her are going too slow. So she pushes hard, but so far she didn't really manage to get it technically right. Well, those are some of the route choices that can be made mm -hmm. to Control 13. So it seems as if they are going to take the same option as Helena Berryman was taking on the first leg. Which proved to be good. Yep, staying close or northwest of the line. She certainly caught up a fair few seconds just on that route choice compared to Switzerland, anyway. But Sweden and Carolyn Olsen leading the way trying to get through the terrain quicker and leave the others in her wake but it does mean all the others have to do is kind of just follow for the moment even if they'll know that even if that control is forked they there won't be much difference in uh, in where the controls are and they can just safely bash it bash their way down the mm -hmm. slope I think it's quite an easy guess to see that it's unforked there since it's such an easy control Um, it will be interesting to see if Marianne Andersen is going to take another route choice than the leading group. Maybe a bit more straight, as we have seen uh, Team Finland taking on the first leg. Sofia Hayana. But with uh, Andersen now, and she's climbing. She looks to be trying to avoid as much green as possible. Mm -hmm. Yep, just heading over the, the brow of the hill in the, in the white. I think she's going for the option a little more straight, as we have seen, uh, as I said, Team Finland doing on the first leg. Ah, but now they start to uh, split up at the lead with uh, mm -hmm. Ryabkina from Russia going just heading up the hill straight away. But I don't think that's a good choice by Ryabkina. If you already are there, then you... Yeah, then you can run around on the path. 
it's always a little bit easier to cl to take the climbing on paths. And Finland's choosing a, a very different route choice there. And there you can see the green tracking looks like she'll head all the way down to the bottom and go up the road. But Sweden and Switzerland at the moment heading the same way and they will take the climb up the path. It's mm. also not, not quite as... It's hard to say how good the runnability is at the part just where the end of the tail is from Switzerland and Sweden because it seems that might have been quite okay and uh, anyway for Tatiana Ryapkina so we will see well we can check back in by the time Sweden and Switzerland get to the top of the hill then uh, we'll really see which route choice is better but Russia hardly moving at this point mm -hmm. and Finland is not really executing that route choice well I think you should anyway, you should head for the western part of this uh, olive green area and get out there in the open area and not run all the way south as we have seen uh, Elena Roos doing on the first leg. And now I think they are splitting up Switzerland and Sweden. Switzerland continuing on the path. Sweden running parallel to the slope. Um, I would go for the option <laughs> Julia Jakob was uh, choosing. But you do know you've got the feedback that most of the the rough open areas are good good running. Yes, so of course. I think that's influenced uh, Olsen's decision as well. It's a little bit of a gamble, anyway. But it looks good for her. Yeah, it looks like it's paying off for Sweden. We will be able to see them on their way past the castle here in uh, Tiroda and on their way to 13 and on the way back out again with this uh, route choice decision. Oh, now look, Finland has gone yeah, more to the west of mm. that, the olive green, but now maybe going to head up the hill. I think if I think if you go that far down, you commit to doing um, to doing I think the, she's the track going route. South. Yes, um, and my feeling about Sweden is, I mean, she is aware of that she is a stronger runner. I'm quite sure that she noticed that during the beginning of the race here, and uh, no ma matter what she is doing. Um, she's she's just able to open a gap in, in the uphills. That's my feeling. Oh, and Russia is going down there. I think she will lose a lot of time doing that. It gives you an extra 35 meters of climb, I think, if uh, the, the calculations from the GPS team shows. But uh, here's Karen Olsen. She's got to go further towards the castle. And it's still looking pretty strong. Where is the chaser, Yulia Jakob? There we go. Punches. Control number 13. And then as she runs back the other way, she'll get the feedback about how fa how much faster she is compared to Yulia Jakob, who's now coming here for Switzerland. Both of them have had to do the big climb right up to the top of this arena, but now it's a bit more plain sailing. The gap is 18 seconds. It'll be interesting to see uh, how much time. I think Rush is going to lose a lot of time going uh, down and up there. We'll have a check on that. So Sweden leading Switzerland, the, uh, the two favourites for this race, uh, still in the lead. Mm, and I uh, wonder what Team Great Britain is doing up there. Because she was, uh, Megan Carter Davies was close to the Estonia, Latvia and Denmark, but 
Mm, she was punching at control number 12, so she might go for the option around. But whatever she is thinking... Well... We don't know. Meanwhile, Russia still climbing up the hill to control number 13. We know our GPS is a little bit behind real time, so um, we'll soon see her approaching control 13. Meanwhile, I think Sweden and Switzerland will have the different forkings here. Yeah, let's see if we can see Tatiana Rybkina has just had to climb all the way up through the green to this control number 13. We can hear someone. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a tough climb. She lost more than two minutes on this route choice. Uh, and with that, I mean both decisions to leave the group the first time and then to do the extra climbing the second time. But here are the two leaders, though, on their way to the final control. Sweden has the lead, but actually Yulia Jakob being pretty strong in the final stages might be the Falkings uh, there as well. But Sweden and Caroline Olsen is going to lead her team over to the second changeover. She will hand over to Tova Alexanderson, who I'm sure will be very determined to have a clean race today as opposed to her middle distance race. We also have Yulia Jakob chasing. She will hand over to Judith Vida. So Tova Alexanderson heads out and eight seconds later we'll have the hand over to Judith Vida. So Alexanderson and Vida, two of the world's most top orienteers, going to battle it out together on the final leg to see if Sweden or Switzerland can end up with the gold. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting and we also know that uh, we will see some different forkings for uh, the two superstars in orienteering, Tove Alexanderson and uh, Judith Wider. And the Russians don't have a bad runner on the final leg either. No. The new world champion in the middle distance, Natalia Gempela. But it's two minutes. That's quite a bit. But Natalia Gempela just getting the information there that uh, Norway are 53 seconds faster. No, sorry, Russia 53 seconds faster than Norway. Here we see how Tatiana Ryapkina is losing time. She lost about one minute uh, on the decision to leave the group halfway to control 13, and then she lost another minute uh, by running down the valley and up again. Norway also losing time, but on the chase. So Natalia Gempela is ready to be handed out in uh, third position. Second change over. Uh, but again, it's going to be over two minutes behind the two leaders. Tatiana Ryapkina just now up the hill to hand over to the new world champion in middle distance orienteering. The gap is, uh, has grown a little bit, 2.21, and we'll hand over in third position. It's a medal position at the moment, but we also have uh, Norway on the chase, and we're looking for Marianne Anderson, probably the next through to the finish. There she is, and she's going to hand over to Andrea Benjaminson. Mm, and we can say for sure there's still a chance for a medal for Norway. Um, it's a bit more than 40 seconds up to Russia. And uh, Marianne Andersen, she did quite a good race even if she 
minutes, lost quite a lot of time between counter number 12 and 13. And she was able to catch some time if we take it on the whole course. We were saying we wondered whether, whether anyone would be able to pass much information through to their next leg runner. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we look, look at her here, I don't think she was capable of passing any information. But I mean, it, it's an option if you... Uh, if you know that you did good from control 12 to 13, you can always say uh, last route choice, go to the right or something like that, but it has to be very short and very clear, otherwise it's just uh, confusing. On Maya Cienea for Finland, now nearly six minutes behind, and you can also see uh, Evely Kasku from Estonia also heading to control number 13. So Finland also losing, I think, well, even more time than uh, Russia and Norway on the route choice there, just getting kind of stuck mm -hmm. in the white around the olive green in the houses. But I think she chose the wrong route and she didn't execute it well, and that's something you don't want to add together. But Sweden and Switzerland both having the same routes there. Uh, Caroline Jutterup and Evely Kasku there at control 13 together, both eight, seven minutes behind. And the Latvians there too, your Laura Vika. These chases, Estonia and Denmark, seven minutes back. I think not even the great Maya Alm will be able to take that back on the uh, final leg of the relay. She's the now four-time sprint champion, four, six titles in a row in that discipline. And that's I think, the most any orienteer has ever done. But lots of others, I mean, Simone Nigli, Thierry Georgiou getting three in a row, but never four in a row. And this part of the course, the beginning and the end, very, very different to the rest. But this is what it's like when you're running in the grounds of the castle. It's a pretty good venue uh, for an arena, apart from the fact that you've got to have a little bit running out to the actual terrain. But she will hand over to Marika Taney, silver medalist on the middle distance. Well, but I think the gap, well, the gap is a big one. Keep in mind that the top six places fight for the top six for Finland. But anyway, I think Marika Zeleni will do her best. The gap is six minutes and 11 seconds. Finland now with Marika Zeleni on the last leg, probably out of the medals, barring any disasters from the, the top three. But. Uh, yeah, I had a, a really bad middle distance, so I was really on point. Here we have the GPS of the first group, and now they have a uh, different control number five. We ha didn't have that one yet. Uh, we see that they are splitting up. Tuve Alexanderson is trying to keep closer to the red line, and Judith Weider is taking the very safe choice around, where she is able to push quite hard. So interesting that they are splitting up. I would have expected them to to keep together. Caroline just hands over now to Maya Alm. The gap is seven minutes and fourteen seconds. Yeah. Well, maybe, they, maybe they've split up. If they've got the feedback on the first section where they had the same forkings, that their, their speed is similar, they need to really do make a better route choices to, to be able to mm -hmm. lose the other one. But at the, at, at the same time, there's still a lot left of the course, and I think you, you would like to... I mean, you don't have to decide the race at that point. No. But of course, you can do that. And uh, we have seen it was first you did video running away from the control, so it was Tuve's decision to not take the same route as uh, Judith Vidal is taking. 
Well, Natalia Gempeler catching up about 25 seconds there just to from the handover to control number three, but she might have had a different uh, forking though. We saw um, Sweden and Switzerland both had uh, C forking, which we think is the slowest. And we also knew that Norway was 37 seconds behind Russia, and I think it's more now. So Andrine Benjaminsen punching at the third control, and she still has to go to control number four. These are the standings of the top eight through uh, exchange number two. Sweden, Switzerland, only eight seconds between them. And then Russia chasing two minutes 21. Here we have Benjaminsen for Norway. And indeed, she is now one minute and 12 seconds behind uh, the bronze medal. Uh, she's only lost about eight seconds on, on the leaders. But here is uh, Judith Vida now to the run through. And uh, where is Alexanderson? Mm -hmm. Seems to have paid off to go around there. So Judith Vida of Switzerland now heads through the arena past our commentary position and takes on some water. And we also know that uh, Switzerland now has the, let's say, the easiest control at least, control number eight, and uh, Sweden and Tove Alexanderson, she has the most difficult one in the green area. Well, Alexanderson punches there and she's 31 seconds behind, so losing half a minute just from control four. Let's have a look at what happened. Mm, she misses uh. the control. I think otherwise it would have been quite about the same. But that's also part of the route choice uh, you did with them made. Uh, I mean, you can't miss the control if you're running around there. No. No, Judith Vida keeping it simple, uh, but m getting uh, Sweden, the accuracy. Now also into Republic. the changeover. This is the Czech Republic and Vendula Horchakova handing over to Jana Knapova. We also had Austria and Great Britain in the, in the meantime as well. So Vandila Huchkova hands over to Jana Knapova. We know their first leg runner at least had some problems out in the forest around about controls eight and nine. When they're all on top form, that could be contention. But now, as you can see the different routes, Sweden has F, Switzerland G, and Alexanderson is the first one to really get to go up the hill at that point. So Natalia Gempler on the chase for Russia. We're trying to hold off any advances from Norway. So she hangs on to the bronze. Gap 217. She lost 23 seconds from the first TV control. Uh, control number four. So even if we thought there would be uh, maybe fewer mistakes today compared to the middle distance, there's still mistakes being made out there in the forest, both from route choice and from execution. Are you Katani? 6.23 behind, dropping uh, 12 seconds compared to Sweden, uh, compared to the changeover. Now just looking ahead, using the uh, easier running and going up the hill to check the route choices later on in the course. But 3.23 and she's dropping behind. Maya Alm, seven minutes behind, caught up 14 seconds on this first section of the course. Let's compare Switzerland and Sweden. 
to control number eight. Looks good for both of them, I think. Alexanderson is now coming into the most green part, just before the control. We haven't seen very many runners at all, if any, go um, over the hill into control eight with uh, F. It's obviously it's more mm -hmm. tempting if you have F. And that's exactly what she's done, but may obviously able to get lots of speed going down the hill in the white area too. For Estonia now, Marion Haug. About eight minutes behind the lead, running with uh, Grossberger from Latvia. So both punching to control at the same time, but uh, still I would say there's an uh, advantage for Judith Wider. And now in my opinion uh, it's easiest to have a control G, because it's the one coming first. You don't have to navigate that much in the slope. Um, it seems that Tuve is taking another approach, as we have seen uh, many others doing, following in down the spur, going over the saddle there uh, to the stream, and then attacking the control from under. And uh, I think that's good, because then you can see the, the control uh, when you're looking up the hill. I don't think she would have to climb there more. It seems to me she is climbing too much here. Mm, no, I think she's approaching the control from a different direction to what we've seen a lot of the others do, but now... Just looking around her and really stopping. I think she just crossed by the note. Yeah, I think she gets closer to it. There, there it is. Yeah, a small mistake by Judith Wider. That might open up for Team Sweden again. Denmark's Maya Alm into the arena passage, but she was, she's actually lost about 30 seconds just from control four to control seven here at the arena passage. Here we have Alexanderson passing a control. My, and I think you can see you did read it there. I think you're right. Yes, indeed. So I think. Yeah. I think she passed the. She's already punched her control nine, passed the other one, uh, the yeah. easterly most one, and now getting the feedback that I probably caught up some seconds. Mm -hmm. So I think the control she passed was H uh, when we had her in the picture. We saw that Twitter was going up to watch there. Uh, about the same mistake as we saw uh, Caroline Olsson doing, but she was going to another control. Yeah, but now the two of them together, Alexanderson and uh, Vida, are going to cross this uh, ravine, slightly different places, and then they've got 
But they're not really, they don't really like to run together. They always split mm. up and they see each other. But now they've got, there's no more four kings left. There are no more four kings left mm. at all. They've all got the, the same controls now all the way to the finish. Of course, they won't know that, but there's no more time to be won or lost uh, when you think about the four kings. I think we will see this decision in this race between Control 12 and 13. Because uh, as it looks now, they don't really want to run together. So they will split up eventually. And uh, it's the one punching first at Control number 12 <laughs> who can decide freely which route choice they're going to take. That's, that's what I think will happen. I think that's a good call. Uh, Switzerland now. She missing that control eleven? I don't think so. But it definitely took the, the better route up the hill into the control sorry, control ten. And now they're on the way to control eleven and we'll get another um camera check here and we get a time check again at control number twelve. In fact we get a time check at eleven as well. But now for Norway, we are behind Andrina Benjaminsen. We're back and uh, see how big the gap is. Is he seeing Judith Wider at that point? I don't think so. I can think hear can her. Hear from the green area, there. She must have missed a little bit. Yeah, I think she was just slower crossing the crossing the stream and going with all th through all the crags there. So these little micro route choices are actually costing quite a lot of seconds. And if you go somewhere, there's just like that many more trees to climb over. If you get an area that's really white and really runnable, then actually a lot of seconds to be won and lost. Benny Minson uh, on the slope there. Let's have a look. So let's see what happened to control number 11. Because here it's not more than 20 seconds. Okay. That's really difficult to tell. But now I think uh, Alexanderson is taking a little bit better route choice there. You don't have to go up to the fence and follow that one in. I think the runnability is good in the slope there to control number 12. So they might come together there. And then it will be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, well, this big route choice, uh, as you said, Jonas, from 12 to 13, uh, well, it's going to, I think you said they're going to split up. We'll see exactly what happens. They've been, ten they've been splitting up all the way around this course. And if they do that again, then it's going to be the one who makes the best decision that will gain a lot of time. Let's have a look now on. Yeah, I think we 12. can see Tove Alexanderson in the background as well. So now it's up to Judith Wider to take it, make a decision. And then we will see if Tuve is following the same route as Judith Wider. Well, the gap now only eight seconds. Wider leading Alexanderson on the chase. Just caught up, caught up 16 seconds just on that leg from 11 to 12. The top six teams here pictured. Still big gaps back to third place Russia and then again to fourth place Norway. Natalia Gempler for Russia on the final leg, Anthony Benjaminson uh, for Norway on the final leg. We've also got Marie Katani and Maya Alm running together in fifth and sixth. 
now in this section of white. Look, there is actually some runnable terrain here. And you can see them, they're going... Still going the same direction. Now, what do you think Alexanderson will be see will be thinking, uh, bearing in mind two days ago her absolute disaster on the middle distance? Well, I don't think she's... I don't think that at that point that's not the matter anymore. It's Now it's this route choice and uh, the control itself is no problem. So it's mostly about executing the route choice. I think it's more about the feeling how will it be to meet the other one in a sprint, if it comes to a sprint. Well... I'm going to ask the question, who's going to win in the sprint? <laughs> That's a very tough one. I don't think I've seen those two girls sprinting against each other. Um, but I've seen Tuve, she lost the sprint two years ago at the European Champs uh, at the relay. Um, I don't know. Um, I would say there's a small advantage uh, for Judith Vida. But we also have to have in mind it's after big climbing and um, that changes uh, like everything. It, it's more about uh, who can take the climbing better than about the sprinting in the end. Well, both of them are sticking together and actually heading a much further south than we've seen. So neither of them really having the strength and the conviction that their route choice is going to be better so just choosing to stick together yeah I mean it doesn't matter as long as they are together they don't really have to pick the best route but uh, it's good enough if they don't lose uh, against Natalia yes and we did see uh, Vida in the front but now looks from the GPS trackings that now uh, Alexanderson in the front so changing position but still neither of them at this point wanting to break away from the other maybe wanting but not able to do <laughs> so or uh, not breaking away from the other in terms of route choice anyway that's right again Palelsa choosing a similar route uh, looks like at the moment going straight down this hill Well, okay. And now I think they will start to <laughs> to play like their strength out against each other. Maybe try to yeah to do a little bluff there. I think it's going to get exciting. Yeah, for sure. I, th I think I think <laughs> it we're is already <laughs> exciting. It's already exciting, but it's going to. I think we're going to be on for a sprint finish. Unless someone decides to really push on early, but there's still the two of them going together. Now looking for the chaser for Norway. Gempler actually for Russia has caught up a little bit of time uh, on the other two, going a bit faster, but it's probably not enough mm. now for her to, no, to catch the top so. two. Especially as she is taking the same route choice. But Benny Minson, uh, I think there, she was 3.23 behind at the run-through. So lost a minute and 20 seconds from the arena run-through now to this point of the course, control 11. Well, the two of them... <laughs> They're still together. You only see one dot. I promise you, there's two runners there. And uh, maybe they'll try and put in an attack up that hill. It's so tricky, though. You've got to, there is a, an area of white that you've got to run through, so it might be just picking the best little micro route choices. Russia going the same way, but now not going out to the track. Yeah, now it's all about the climbing. My arm from Denmark there, punching a 
control number 11. She's eight minutes down. She's still losing time on the leaders. But I think has over to, uh, caught up in a place. Overtaken Finland and Mary Katani is the next we'll see into this control. I think we can hear her. There we go. So Maya Alm has uh, caught up and overtaken Mary Katani of Finland, but uh, at the moment they are racing for the which podium yeah. positions now. Mm, Let's have a look. Now we see that there is a small advantage for Judith Wider. And now I'm, I really think that she is giving everything in that climb just to... I mean, you can kind of bluff and uh, throw in everything you have and uh, try to be a little bit offensive there, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, wait, we'll, so see, we'll see them at control number 13 uh, and exactly. pretty much all the way till the end. So we'll be able to capture uh, just what they're doing but or orienteers are not really used to this to, to to running alongside somebody for pretty much all the course yeah relays is something special of course it's not uh, an everyday situation especially not with this pressure um but that's something they like i'm, I'm sure about that it's something and special now it actually looked as if uh, two we had an advantage there well, we will be able to see them at uh, the top of the hill at Control 13, where the castle is. We know our GPS, of course, is a, uh, a little bit behind real time. But now we're at Control number 12, looking for our next runner. It should be Maya Alm. Here she is in the picture. Just checking. And now she's got decisions to make on the route choice to Control number 13. Okay, this is control number 13. Who comes out of the yeah, forest yeah. first? It's Alexanderson. Yeah. And where is the, the control there she there, is. But ah. she is missing the control. She's missing the control, so that opens up again. Whoa. And the two of them. That could have been the gap already. Ah. And they're two seconds in so it. So now it's more or less just running into the finish. That was a pity for Alexanderson because I ha had the feeling that she already got it there. Mm. Yeah, she was maybe 10 seconds um, ahead just coming up to the, the hill there. And now there's only two and the, the two runners really, really got to build on all of their training, all of their physical strength now. The navigation is not difficult and they will know they've got the, the same forkings. It's ways at the end of the relay it's pretty much the same russia chasing up the hill but of course the gap too much and you can see a different route choice being made by norway actually a pretty good one made there um by benjaminson but russia too close to the control so we'll very shortly pick up our two leaders on our tv controls as they've only got the short section but advantage sweden at the moment with Alexanderson, who's out for revenge. Yeah, but maybe they're, they're the same at Control 14. Oh, the tension. Okay. Yeah, I think that uh, Vida is heading to the path. Both of them might do so. And now it seems, at least on the GPS, as if there is a gap. A little gap at least, but that we thought already up to the 13th control. So let's okay. wait for the pictures. That's well. not Natalia <laughs> <laughs> You see the red vest. <laughs> Kempela still in bronze medal position, looking solid for her. She's not got a sprint finish, but actually still gaining some time on the leaders overall. But let's uh, see if we can... Let's go back, and here we have Judith yeah. Wieder. And Judith Wieder for Switzerland. She takes a look behind her. Where is Alexanderson? Not sure what's happened there, but uh, able to join her co-runners, Elinorus, Judith Jakob, and Judith Wieder. I thought we were going to be in for a sprint finish there, but Switzerland, they take, they took the European title on home soil. They now take the world title in the relay. Just outrunning Sweden in the final stages, and Alexanderson 
Oh, absolutely gutting for her. The two of them close together. In fact, Alexanderson was stronger up the hill. She collapses across the line and consoled by her teammates, Linda Bergman and Carolyn Olsen. It's a silver there, but what a great run at the end from Judith Vida. And, uh, she is not happy to be. I don't know what happened there in the, in the very end. No. And uh, I think what a relief for Judith Vida as well. Huge relief. She knew she was up against um, not only five-time world champion Alexanderson, but someone who really had um, was out for revenge after her middle distance. But uh, the Swiss women have the title for the Europeans and the world title. Alexanderson not happy with herself. Oh, well, but still uh, great sportsmanship going and uh, to S Team Switzerland. Give your congratulations to them. So we're looking now for the bronze medalists and Russia and Natalia Gempler on their way. Great picture there from the champions of the relay. Okay. Well, it was a head to head all the way around for Sweden and Switzerland, but Russia, hey, they've got the bronze medal and it's a secure bronze for them. Fourth after the third leg pulls up into third position and then could maintain that on the third leg from Natalia Gempela. Uh, very happy with their bronze medal, but further back now, this is the fourth place team. And Benny Minson making uh, some st mistakes in Cattle Forest. Going to go into fourth spot. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia Gempela just knew she, she she would know the gap and that it was pretty it was her job to, to hang on for that bronze medal absolutely I mean uh, she knew that uh, two of the I mean those were the three best runners uh, in the field so if nothing really happens two minutes is just too too much to catch so a word on, on the top two and the victory for Switzerland. Well, it was very exciting because they actually split up quite often, but they always got back together again. I expected them to split up again between 12 and 13, because I kind of had the feeling that they tried to avoid to get to this uh, sprint finish, but they didn't, and uh, they took the route choice, the route around. Um, and I'm still a little bit surprised that Tuve missed control 13. I had the feeling that she had a little gap there. If she had been able to take the control without any hesitation, she would have had a gap of 5 to 10 seconds and uh, it might have been enough. It might have been enough. It would have put her securely in the yeah. front. But I think there's some, some yeah. something around the control 14 as well. But and I'm not sure what happened to 15, but that's definitely where some time is lost. She was still a little bit confused from control 13, so she m might have missed 14 a bit. We don't know that. Uh, would she, uh, if she had had this 10 seconds lead there, she could have taken it a little bit uh, slower, maybe some... Uh, more. Oh. Oh, here we see. My own doing a big mistake. Yeah, she could have yeah. built in a little bit more. Uh, how should I say it? Safety in her in her map reading, and I think she she would have had a chance there to get the title. But for Norway, Andrei Benjaminson will. Now go into the finish and take the fourth spot. 
And we can say mistake to number eight uh, for the first leg runner, Camilla Olsson, uh, being something that did a lot of damage for the Norwegian team early on in the relay. Never really able, well, they fought back after that, but it was uh, too much to uh, gain on the leaders and the eventual winners, Switzerland. In uh, this year, really. But remember, Camille Olofsson, very good start in the first leg, then a mistake, and uh, who knows, maybe that may cost the medal, but uh, still, that was a very good debut for the uh, Camille Olofsson, and uh, remember, Marian Andersen did very good the second leg. Uh, Bringing them all the way back to the hospital for the final for the medal. Well, that's our top four in. We're looking now for Finland and Denmark to be the next couple of teams in, but oh, we can even see Latvia coming close as, as Austria also making the same mm -hmm. mistake as Denmark there. It's strange why they do that mistake. I don't really know. Got onto the wrong, uh, to the mm. wrong stream. I think but that's that's uh, what you have your compass for. <laughs> actually, I mean you have <laughs> yeah. to check it from yeah. time to time. <laughs> you do. Just check your direction. And you change direction 90 degrees there within 100 meters. So that's kind of strange. Yeah, that really is. And you've been there before. So Maya Alm will be a bit disappointed. No, she's made a big mistake there, but and she knew she'd overtaken um, Marie Kataini for Finland on control 13. But actually, like, the gap could be worse. <laughs> There's Taini on her way to control 13. And she will see my arm now, very soon. Yeah, there she is, and that was a few minutes lost there. I think she was eight minutes behind, and now it's going to be the 10. But now uh, this is where Alm will do well and run fast, but there's still 23 seconds she is behind Finland. There's also the Latvian there, Sandra Grossberger, going well on the final leg. And this is, uh, she'll pass Alm and go into seventh spot at control 13. had the top four runners in to the finish, but here uh, to take the fifth spot for Finland, Marie Kataini. Uh, good route choice into the long leg into 13. Did her well, at least not making mistakes. So Finland, their team, Sofia Hainan, Maya Sinaya and Marie Kataini, they go fifth. It's under 10 minutes behind winners Switzerland. And we also have Maya Alm from Denmark 
in to take the sixth spot and complete the podium. Tough running uh, from her, especially a little mistake there, but there's always a, a lot of time. There's too much time for her to catch up. So our final results, after we've had the top six now into the finish, the win from Switzerland. We thought it was maybe going to come down to a sprint finish. Not quite that. Sweden into second and the silver medal for them. Russia anchored by Natalia Gempeler into third spot for the bronze. Norway in fourth, Finland fifth and Denmark sixth. So our uh, crowd here, they've witnessed a very, very exciting relay in the women's. Hopefully the men's will live up to the same standards. Certainly uh, Kibbert's fan club are hoping so. Well, I, I think they'll be hoping for a nice, clean one with, with no mistakes and no drama. Anyway, we move on to the men's relay here in uh, Tereda in Latvia. And let's have a look at the map. Mm -hmm. uh, the start is very similar. Uh, it's the same, exact, to be exactly there. Uh, first control, um, then the same forking to the second control, but then we have a different third control. It's a, bit a little bit longer there. Um, here we have the same forkings again. Uh, back to the arena with the passage, and then same route choice to control number eight. Also the same forking to control number nine. And then here we have a little bit of longer leg. Uh, it's the extra loop compared to the women's race, control 10, uh, where you have the option to go all the way up. Uh, but I don't think they will do that. I think they will stay in the slope. Uh, 11, uh, quite an interesting forking. It will be uh, nice to see how they develop uh, if one of them is faster than the others. Um, and then we have quite a similar route choice 13, 14, but not exactly the same. Uh, this control 13 is a bit, a little bit more to the south, so it might be uh, even more a, a bigger possibility to go all the way around, as we have seen uh, Judith Wieder and Tuve Alexanderson doing, for example. So again, the start list in the same order of the uh, that they finished in the World Champs last year. So defending champions Norway, defending silver medalists France, and then Sweden. Who mm -hmm. are your picks? Yeah, I mean, normally I would say it's between Norway and Switzerland, but they had a big change in the Norwegian team. Olav Lundenes is not running because he has some stomach issues. So it's Kaute Haaland-Staver coming in uh, on the first leg. And then you have Eskil Schinneberg and Magne Daly on the second and third leg. And that's kind of a game changer because Olav Lundenes might be the strongest runner uh, in the whole field here. Uh, when you saw the speed he had in the middle distance. So, it's, yeah. I would say now for me, Switzerland is, is the favorite. They had uh, position two, three, and four in the middle distance. And I mean, it's about the same length here. It's kind of the same or kind of orienteering, but not exactly. Um, so, uh, for me, Switzerland is the big favorite. They have been many times before. Um, in the men's race, it's so close together, and I think there are many nations, many runners who can uh, just follow and have about the same speed if they don't have to be too active in the map reading. So, I would say as long as you're not dropping off uh, by doing any mistakes, you still have a chance to win a medal, but it's always very hard to regain time if you once are behind. Well, anybody on this, this front row that we've uh, seen introduced here, any of them could be in the battle for the medals. You should also men maybe mention the team from the Czech Republic and also from Britain as well. Uh, could be in the uh, mix. And another very interesting team is uh, Team Ukraine, actually. They have uh, Sherbakov on the first, and then they have uh, Oleksandr Kratov and on the second, and uh, Ruslan Glebov on the third leg. So if uh, Sherbakov can uh, go well here on the first leg, I think they have a very good chance to get a medal. So they need 10 seconds to go. They're all ready to attack this course. And they're off. 
So we've got 38 teams here on this men's relay and they rip open their mats. Estonia and Timo Sills uh, at the front of the pack leading them out and they have uh, some steps to go and they'll make the start control. Here it is. They round the corner. Let's see who is leading off this pack. Estonia going well. So, team from the US. All 38 teams make their way and it's of course the first time that they see this map. I think, do you think they'll be expecting this, this start? Um, not that there is a very easy first control. I think they're expecting the start, starting point to be in kind of this area where the first control is, but now they're already splitting up the runners from the beginning to give them different opportunities when it comes to the route choice. Yeah, I can see they really are splitting up here. It's the same four kings as on the women's course. And it just starts to force them to think very early on and, and really split up. You can see for Norway in the white, red and blue strip. He, I think he already had punched the first control. Uh, here we have, now we are in a part we haven't seen from the women's race. And I think uh, the difficulty here is if you have the one the control we, we are seeing now in the picture, that you don't follow the other ones in a slightly wrong direction. Uh, that's the risk here to that control. Uh, but the control itself is not very difficult to take. And then you have the possibility for, from control 11, from the one we see now, to back, uh, back out again from the control and use this path and you don't really have that possibility from the two other controls. So even if this one is a little bit further away, uh, it can be, can be quite a good one to have. How would you say this compares to the middle distance area? Um, it's quite different because you have uh, many features here to read. The middle distance area was very flat in some parts. It was uh, you had to use your compass very often. You don't really uh, need to do that much work with the direction today. It's mostly that you have to be very careful in the slope uh, to not drop too much or to climb too much. Now I think the letters are wrong here because I wouldn't be expecting yeah. Norway and Estonia no, to uh, be going uh, that way and then everybody with A and C to be going to B and C controls. Mm -hmm. So that possibly explains why, well, Norway and Estonia, we know the A forking is the, the shortest one at the to control number one anyway. Mm -hmm. And we have seen from the women's race that uh, option, number, uh, option A is slightly faster than uh, option B and C. So Switzerland up there, so to Finland, France there, the red dot, Sweden, uh, Russia. That looks like Switzerland and Finland leading the group on their way to controls B and C. Estonia and Timo Sills still going well on the A forking. We will see them again at control number three. We can hear some of them already. And that's a control uh, we didn't see in the women's race. Yeah, they just got a little bit further here at this very early part of the course. Camera panning around, looking to see who the first athletes will be. You can definitely hear something. Mm -hmm. Here we go, and it's Estonia. Timo Sills leading the way. It's, uh, Denmark, Norway. 
Switzerland, and Australia, I think, and New yeah. Zealand there. Austria going well too, so to Spain. Estonia, Great Britain, Sweden, France, Canada, Russia, Belgium, uh, Belarus. Uh, Ukraine back. Yeah. Almost all the teams, Germany here, Slovakia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Bulgaria, Czech Republic. Czech Republic, USA, and Japan. And are, are we expecting the men to bunch up more than the women did? Um... I'm quite surprised that there were so big gaps in the women's race. Uh, on the other hand, it's a very physical uh, race, so once a gap is open, there's a good chance to get away, and the visibility is not that good, so it, it, that is for sure uh, makes it easier to get away. But I think, uh, as I said before, um, as long as you're not doing any mistakes in the, in the men's race, I think they will be together. Nicolas Rio from France is one of the few ones to go the other way round all the undergrowth here. It's been a little passage cut through. And, and this is the point where you, you want to be clear about your own direction to your own control. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen that in the women's race, that some of the women, they weren't really prepared for the route choice here, so they followed to the wrong uh, working, or at least uh, they followed out from the control the right, uh, the wrong direction. Yeah, a lot of them going the way the uh, Japanese orienteer has gone and then uh, having the wrong way. This is what will come later on in the course. The big route choice decision that we've seen has been crucial. I expect that we see quite many going for the red one. Or oh, not the red one, but the, the brown one in the middle. Pretty straight. Yeah. And then round the top. You really don't. You really don't want to do the green. No. <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. No. It's uh, maybe only. Uh, well, it's an extra 35 meters of climb, but it's also. I mean, oh, just in that green, you lose a lot of time, as as we saw. And here we see actually that Sweden they follow to control D, and that's what we talked about. It's easy to just follow uh, the others out from the control and we see also that France and uh, Estonia they are doing mistakes after after going right uh, when it comes to the root choice but that was a small mistake there by uh, Jonas Leandersson I think he lost some seconds doing that yeah, as opposed to sticking by the ponds and sticking in the open area anyway. It looks like the three of them now successfully got control 5E, but Switzerland leading into control number 6. And now we're looking at, let's just let's left a picture, control number 7 just before our arena run through. And it looks like it is Switzerland leading the way. Florian Hovald is there. And here we have the other ones. Coming, but already now we have the two big favorites in the lead, Norway and Switzerland. Florian Hovald leading the way for Switzerland. He took the bronze medal a couple of days ago in the middle distance, led by Gerd Hallenstever. Uh, Tim Wilson doing well, silver medalist from the sprint. We so have Alexi Niemi from Finland, to Lassen from Denmark, Austria, Spain, Britain, Belarus, all in the top nine so far. It's like Russia will make up the top ten. Nakhnechny running on first leg for them. Latvia taking a joint 11th spot there and then a bigger chasing group. Timo Sil there into 13th place after his mistake to control number five. And Jonas Leanderson as well, we, who we saw uh, making a route choice error, just getting carried away by the rest of the runners onto his control number five. He is down in the rankings. And the team from the Czech Republic, possibly 
uh, one to watch, Pavel Kubat. He's also down. He will go into 23rd place and a minute behind the leader, currently Hovald. Mm, and here we see Jonas Leandersson running to control D instead of E. So uh, that Denmark was doing a good job there. Yeah, it might have been almost 30 seconds, I would say. 25, maybe. Here we have them running around, all of them. No one is going over the hill so far. Um, Alexanderson, she showed that that is quite a good option if you have the first of those three controls. And the gap from Norway to Sweden, 39 seconds. Jonas mm -hmm. Leandersen running with Albin Riedefeldt and Gustav Bergman on the final leg. So let's have a look at the four kings now. Yeah, we have uh, Norway, control G. We have Switzerland with H, I think, and Finland also with H. And... Uh, all the ones with the F option. I think it would have been a good choice to go straight over the hill there. Sweden have G. The uh, oh, they've round renamed them. This is confusing. <laughs> so H being the uh, what we think is the fastest of all of the four kings there. Still, all of them together. Uh, the one with F, they should start to go a little bit more to the left. And Norway have G, so at the front of the pack. Mm. Uh, they were heading up the re-entrant. We see Florian Hovald, he's trying to avoid some of the climbing. Going around there. Together with Team Finland. That's good company. They have to go to the same control. We see also that... Uh, yeah, it's still about those 38 seconds for Team Sweden, I would say. Mm -hmm. Very good orienteering so far. All of them. Now, yeah. And the, the three main leaders all turning similar times. Norway possibly just slightly ahead at control G. And now got a little bit further to go across this stream. And then again, some tricky controls here at, at number nine. I think it's quite, as I said in the women's race, I think it's quite good to have uh, control H there because it's the first one coming. You don't have to orienteer too long in the slope and then you can change to a little bit <laughs> more rough technique when you leave the control. Karen Hovell needs to be careful. He doesn't go too high at this particular point. He's being chased by Alexi Niemi there. And they just have to, and yeah, Niemi's got it a little bit better. We've seen that when you go further up the slope, there are fewer features, and that's mm. when uh, mistakes can creep in. And I think, we as see well. now that Norway's at that control, and he doesn't need it. So that's what I meant before. The other ones have it. He still uh, has to look for his control, and it's much easier um, if it's the first one you see, if you have it. Well, that's a group of five. Leading group all going together. Top three joined by uh, 
Denmark mm -hmm. and Great Britain there. Got the feeling that Norway left a little bit to the left up there. Yeah, I think you can see uh, he's going to be in the picture there. He is. He's looking around. Yeah, I don't think that he has to climb. It's quite a n nervous situation when you know that everyone around you punched the control, or at least that they uh, know where the control is. And now he can't see them, and that's quite, quite stressful as well. Yeah, it's tricky, especially when everyone else it's looks like that. You know, they're running together looking determined. You see that he's speeding up really much now. And what are they doing at the moment there? I don't know, don't but they're all sticking together. Really know why they... <laughs> no, actually, it's m it might be good for, for uh, Norway that he doesn't see the other runners. Yeah. Because they will get to this cliff now. You, I don't they think don't want to drop down too far. But Norway looks good going and yeah, picking yeah. up the yeah, the open Definitely. section. Why are they going down there? <coughs> well, they're all going off like headless chickens, <laughs> is the expression. <laughs> ah, well, they've managed to go between the, the mm. crags and now got to do the climbing. But I think they will come together in Norway again mm, now. I think so too. Also got uh, Belarus in there just behind Gathans Deva for Norway. France and Sweden on the chase. Mm, that was really unnecessary to do. It was, and now they've got the, the steeper part of the um, the spur to climb up as well. Mm, and now suddenly we have Norway in the lead. Just like that. So some small mistakes here, there, and everywhere. Now follow behind uh, Damien Knotterpetz for Canada. Now they're all back running together, but Norway probably be able to hear the others behind them and, and get some good feedback that despite his early mistake, it's actually been done a little bit better later on. And also follow behind the Spanish team. Now this control looks fairly tricky because mm -hmm. because there aren't many features around it compared to yeah you have this controls. marsh there I think uh, you would aim for that one and then uh, if you get a little bit too low you have the stream that helps you relocate uh, you also have this green area well actually it shouldn't be too I wouldn't say I mean it's it's possible to miss it but I think they, they will manage to do it uh, without any mistakes. Well, Finland, uh, Switzerland and Britain all again getting stuck in that section of green. Let's see who's first to make it to control number 10. We're looking for the Norwegian. Leading off the defending champions. Here he comes. Looks very confident. Now chasing. Here we have Switzerland. Yeah, Florian Hovald. So Finland. And then Peter Hogginson from Britain is there as well. But we've also got uh, the Thank Danish you. team. Denmark, Tudesen. Andre Salin. For Belarus. And also Sweden, Jonas Leandersson. Almost closed that gap again. 
at least uh, you can see the tail of the group. There yeah. we have Sherbakov. I think even if he hasn't gained necessarily time on the leaders, he's gained places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as long as there isn't really a gap in between the runners in front of you, you still have some kind of contention. Okay, so now they're going to split up. Uh, but it's important to get the direction here. Norway and Britain both have control I, but and Switzerland at the moment following Norway. They've got to head a little bit further west. Russia there down in 16th spot. With a big group of them here fighting up this hill. Mm. Seems that uh, Finland has. Good control, is it Great Britain? Uh, no. Finland no, has good control yeah. to J, but both Norway and Britain yes. need to go further east. They're all being dragged to J. Yes, and that's the risk with this forking here. And even Denmark off And the actually back it there. surprised me a little bit because uh, Norway, he had really the possibility, he was in front with some meters, um, he could just do his own orienteering to that control and there's, I mean, the, the, the path there is splitting up in two parts, so you have really some features to read before the control. It's not the most, imp not the most difficult control. So Norway and Denmark, well, I think Denmark realized first to Alaska where he was and made their way to control I. Great mm -hmm. Britain still uh, got to control J, but that's not the right Sweden one. Sweden has uh, K as well. So he's not at the right control either. Good well work of Team Switzerland and Finland. His control. Yeah, they, they're pretty much the only ones to nail that, going a little bit further east to avoid the climb and then getting control J. Looking good. And Russia, you can see, going choosing to go up the hill and then we'll just sit in that re-entrant to go down into control K but now we can see New Zealand and Great Britain both now heading to control I as we can see Norway and Denmark heading out towards the track to get to the next control which is a common control. Do you think it's a good, good choice to head up to the track here? Uh, for which option? Ah, for uh, to I take think a it's pick. I think it's a very good option for uh, I. It's still uh, no K option for J, and it's no option for K. Well, as they go back on the track, Norway, Finland, Switzerland, and Denmark all together. Even though you had a small mistake from uh, Norway and Denmark, who had control I. Uh, France also going well. There, Nicolas Rio on the uh, silver medal team. In fact, the only one not a part of the uh, different, uh, he wasn't in the team last year for the uh, silver medal that they won after the retirement of uh, Georgiou. But Norway and Switzerland both together now mm -hmm. at control number 12. It's Niemi from Finland very close behind. We also have two last in here of Denmark and those four. Mm, they're splitting up. I didn't expect them to split up here at that point. I thought everyone would run as uh, Denmark and Norway, but maybe they got back to the group there later on. There's because definitely there's three of them heading up there, yeah. right of picture. There's an option uh, around to the more a little bit more to the right. I think you should go straight there. Next is Latvia. 
And also the Anderson as well of Sweden. And he is catching time now on the leaders. Mm -hmm. But one part of it could have been the forking as well. I mean, we have seen him hesitating into the control, so he must have lost a little bit of time there. So he might have just played away a small part of his advantage he had from the from the 4K. So the top nine within a minute of the leaders. And here we have Peter Huggins from Britain just making it into the top ten. Minute 18 behind as well as between Poland and Russians as well. And this is where you can see uh, Nakani actually taking the different route choice probably to control 13. Bulgaria and Ivan Sirikov next. Followed up by the Czech Republic. And Antonio Martinez Perez, Spain. Mm -hmm. Some replay from the four kings. See Team Estonia doing a mistake to control H. He was following to option G there. And then not having control where he has to go. We saw a very good start for the Estonian team, but... Mm -hmm. uh, we see that all of the teams are going straight there. Yeah, as we would expect. Denmark and Norway now this is how we can see that the teams have split up and it's like they're on their way on this longer route choice leg For Switzerland, it's like Thurin Havald uh, looking good on the right-left split screen. Mm -hmm. Replay of the forking. Uh, where we see that Norway was... I don't really understand it. He was on this path there, where the path splits up. So he should have uh, had control over the situation. And we also see uh, Jonas Andersson, who was running to the wrong forking. But at least in not the in the, he didn't have to run back as Norway did. Uh, so in that matter, it wasn't too bad. Now we see that they are splitting up. Switzerland, Latvia and Finland going all the way around. Norway and Denmark running to the north. As we have seen uh, quite many of the women's. Uh, women teams doing it and you see Sweden, France and Belarus going quite straight there This will be interesting to see uh, what happens in the middle Oh, oh. Ouch Crash here Seems to be okay though But it does shake you up when you do something like that Yeah, but I don't think you will feel a lot of pain if you don't really or injured, you will. F you might feel it after the race. <laughs> you really might. So again, we've got four different groups. Mm, and as I said, this control 13, it's a little bit. It's located a little bit more to the south than the women's control. So I think the the option around uh, Switzerland, Finland, Ukraine, and Latvia are taking is actually better here than it was in the women's race. We'll see how it all equalizes out as they climb this hill to control 14, though. We see that uh, Ukraine, they are almost together with Switzerland, and we know they have a strong team coming 
after uh, Denis Sherbakov with uh, Kratov and Glibov. And as Timo Silt from Estonia, number 54 means they were fourth place last time out, but a mistake to uh, the eighth control after a good start from uh, Silt has put them a long way back and now running by yourself at this point. It is very soft underfoot and uh, there has been a fair amount of rain in these parts, keeping it a little bit moist and also bringing the undergrowth up to its max. Group with Sweden, Belarus, France, and the other teams might come a little bit closer compared to Norway and Denmark. And uh, I think it looks quite good for the teams uh, Switzerland, Finland, Latvia, and Ukraine. Even though they have the climbing left there, you have to run all the way around if you are going straight. And Switzerland and Finland leading that pack. Looks like the group of uh, Sweden, France, Belarus going out to the path before they mm -hmm. get onto the slope. And when, when they get up the final brow of the hill, they'll be able to see uh, the group of uh, Norway and Denmark who've already managed to make their way to the top of the hill. Now, now the real test is that make sure they run all the way around and not go down and up yeah i don't think i mean there shouldn't be any risk <laughs> i don't know how you would get the idea to go down and you have been in the valleys before you know when it's green in the valley and if there's a stream it's often very very badly i mean the runability is very bad um and you have to climb again so it's it's not really fast to come down it's not good to get up and it's a lot of climbing and that, that green section as you go down into the valley as well, like they've been used to running downhill into valleys, but it's been a lot more white and more runnable. So as the, the now groups to the north, Norway leading Denmark, leading Sweden, and then the group uh, Belarus, Russia, France, uh, Britain in there as well. Now it's all about who will get to control 14 first. We have got a camera there. Latvia doing well up the hill in the orange dot. to be quite equal um, with Norway having a little bit of a advantage of not having <laughs> the climbing done just some seconds before uh, but here's a yeah. the Latvian Andrus Ubelis and yeah. he's the first one to control 14 yeah. so Latvia leading <laughs> and we've got a cheer from the arena as Andrus Ubelis is the first and contact control they've just they just passed the missed control. It. Yeah, they missed the control. What? Ah. And now we see the Estonian. No, Denis the Ukrainian. Sherbakov heading back, but Switzerland, Switzerland and Finland both passed. missed the control. I hope they will notice that and not just run to the next control. It's kind of a big blackout there. Uh, they, well, they're not. Now they're coming, coming back. back. No, 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 that's Belarus. That's Belarus and Britain. Hang Britain, on, where's yeah. That's Russia. Russia. And France and Poland and Spain, I think. What's that's a big mistake. I hope they notice it.
But there's a risk that they won't. Have we seen them come back yet? Is this? Yes, this yes, is now they're coming. So, so there we minute have and 15. Finland, Switzerland. They lost uh, about a minute here. Uh, yeah. That's the point they noticed. Yeah. yeah. It took them quite a while to notice. Alexi and Yemi noticing first, and they pretty much got all the way back from the castle, at least 100 meters uh, before they realized. But uh, the Latvian and Andrus Jubilis, he's now on his way to the final control. And it's maybe Latvia who will hand over in first spot after the first leg of the men's relay, running on home soil. A hand over to Edgar Bertux, experienced runner. And, uh, well, who would have thought that it is Latvia who are leading the way after leg one of the men's relay. Doesn't really have much more of his map left to read, but Edgar Bertux is there waiting and cheering. Can we even see any of the one others behind him? Mm -hmm. What a great run. We saw that he was behind in the beginning, but then the uh, second part of the course he did really well. And now he's heading over <laughs> first position. So Latvia change over first. And also a good first leg by Gaute Hallandsteven for Norway. And it's very important for them that they have uh, such a big gap now down to Switzerland. Well, Latvia in lead and the gap over you know, so Great over Britain. Team Norway, Eskil Schöneberg is on second leg, is around 20 seconds. That is a gap. Uh, to the second place, uh, sir. And over is a uh, Great Britain also. British runner Peter Hodgkinson uh, now handing over Hill Hanev to Chris Jones, Hunter. who's. No, even second, Great Britain is on second place. Denmark is third. Where is the Norway? Denmark and Sweden in the third place. Just Maybe trying to figure out what the announcer is saying about Britain being in second place. I'm not sure about that. So Spain yeah, changes after, over and Russia as well. What is the gap though, as Shabakov as well as Ukraine? Bulgaria here and France. Mm. Back there, I think we saw Latvia Finland Norway coming in and the Switzerland. Place. Yeah, Norway in the second place for sure. And the gap Great Britain, to Latvia third. is and Sweden. Four, four place after first 1 and 20. 20. And we know from earlier years it's very hard to get back into the race when you're more than one minute behind. We've seen the race at the European Champs. It wasn't even possible to close a 23 second gap there. Well, Hovald can barely walk. This is what happened. They just they just didn't punch the control. They just ran straight past it and were uh, halfway to 15 before they realized. Yeah. And it's uh, they are totally a total blackout there. I think mm -hmm. that has to do something to do with the climbing before you're so tired when you up, get up there and you just want to get, go ahead with your running. But good for them that they notice that they and not just continue to control number 15. Absolutely. Well, let's see if we can. It's a surprise for me. I've seen many, many of the runners missing that, also in the women's race, missing that control number 14 here. Time for leg 13 to 14. That's the long one. Mm, and you see that, but we know that Switzerland lost around one minute. One minute only. 15, I think, yeah. on the, on the um, mistake. So I think the option around is okay. Um, I don't know where, which option Spain uh, chose. I think it was quite quite straight, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, the next, Alexi Niemi, one of the two who uh, think he would had have blackouts. He would have needed the water just uh, before control number 14. Yeah, it's so hot out there. It's about, yeah. about 30 degrees. Celsius, and uh, when you've just done that climb. Interesting with Latvia in the lead after the first leg. Mm. I mean, it's not a nobody on the second leg either. So, excellent start for Latvia. Yeah, on the two bells, here, here, Piers Vieni Radic, for Lielis, Pirmo Etap Skreish, and Slava Vinyam Sakoya, Vairagus Gabs, and Shodian, Jay Patal, Shemar. Now here are our routes at control number two on the mm -hmm. second leg. You see that uh, 
Eskil Shinneberg almost closed the gap already to compared to Edgar Spertux from Latvia. Switzerland with uh, control C. C Finland control A. France C. Both Latvia and Norway got successfully got control B. We know A quicker and set. Sweden and Albin Niederfeld, Russia, it's Yuri Tambasov. France, a little bit too much to the uh, west there. And looks like uh, Eskil Schinneberg, the uh, winner of the middle distance, caught up the Latvian now. Edgar Zbertox, who left the arena with the lead. So here we are at control three. Let's see who we see there first. You can hear approaching footsteps, certainly. I think there we are. I mean, this just gives Coming you an indication about, about the visibility. There we go. And it is the Norwegian Tinneberg, the new world champion. Just a few seconds ahead of Bertux of Latvia. So the Norwegian already caught up 17 seconds. But the gap back to the British team, a bit bigger one. Chris Jones coming next. Mm -hmm. This is Sweden. Looking to read the felt. Good start. So Russia, Russia there as well. Denmark. I think they both had A. Yeah, see Britain and uh, Finland there too. Just waiting for Switzerland now. As the Spanish team also go through control three. Eduardo Gil Marcos. Team from Czech Republic. Nina Schnickerdim. But Eskert and Vogue now down to control number four. And the two of them going left out of the control. We've got a f two different controls here after, after this one, control number four, two different forkings. And this is where we've seen people make mistakes just because they're following the wrong person. But Abin Riederfeld on the chase and has already caught up about 30 seconds for Sweden there. So Riederfeld, a good start to his campaign. Although we've got to remember they are, there are four kings. It's only after all three runners go will it be uh, equal running between all of them. Russia and Tamsov there. Denmark and Sudberg. Finland caught in Spain and Gil Marcos. Mm, Sweden actually caught uh, half a minute already from the start. Uh, one part is, uh, I think, due to the forking, but uh, half a minute is a lot, so it's opened really strong there out in the defense. Chris Jones. And here through. we have Switzerland as well. One minute and two seconds. He started one minute and 22 seconds behind. And I think he had the same forking there in the beginning, or about the same. So a good start for Daniel Hoopman. Uh, missing control a little bit too far to the west and then you just can't see the control back mount control 4 Such Pavlak from Poland going 12th. And that's uh, Basse, that's how far Basse has dropped down with his mistake. Mm. 
A bit surprising for me, Oleksandr Kratov. He already lost half a minute from the start to this TV control. So now we're back at our arena passage on the second leg of this men's relay. And there's a couple of them in the lead. It's Norway and it's still Latvia. And it's a cameraman as well. Back there, we can already see Team Sweden and uh, Albin Riedefeldt coming closer and closer. Edgar Malatis! So, Sinebo for Norway goes first with Latvia second, four seconds behind. But uh, Albin Riedefeldt had a great start. Yeah, he was 17 seconds behind. Now it's 14. And here we have uh, Team Denmark also with a very good start from uh, Björn Sederberg. He started with 46 seconds behind. Now it's 33. It's coming closer. Also Daniel Hoopman there in the background. Very good start. Very good start then. As Paulson for Finland goes Chris Jones for Great Britain. Daniel Hubman for Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, another 15 seconds. He is closer to the leading group now. And those top eight have a little bit of a gap. And Russia is next with Tambasov. Now again, out into the tricky controls eight and nine. Seen some mistakes here. No, not quite as many as uh, for the women on the, the first leg. And again, most of them choosing to stick along the track. Mm -hmm. But we don't have any one of them with uh, option F yet. We have. We, d we d will have uh, Switzerland. Yeah, but uh, he's not allowed to cut over yet. Still marked on the path there, so now he could leave. But he's not doing it, as it seems. No. A lot of them will have F on the final leg, actually. Norway, Sweden and Finland all have F on the final leg. And now we see that they are heading up there anyway. And uh, Alexanderson, she proved us that it's uh, quite a good choice. And she was running up there on the last leg in the women's race. One is going really straight there. Not afraid of the green areas. No, he's feeling strong after gold in the sprint, silver in the middle. What is Sweden doing there? I think he tries to avoid some of the climbing. Um, so that group of Norway, Latvia, Sweden, all the same. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. so now we see what this skill doing there. Okay. Might have been some fallen tree in his way. <laughs> And now it's looking better for Sweden through the felt into control. Yeah, H, I think he just actually. tried to avoid some of the climbing there. Yeah. Didn't cost him any time. And now I think that um, Bertux has a little bit of a tough time there to 
keep up with the speed of Team Norway and Sweden. Same time we see that no problem for Daniel Hopman. And, uh, and so I think a good Spanish decision team. to go straight as well. Yeah. No mistake so far in this section. A bit surprising that Russia is choosing to go straight. I think they're drag dragged up there by uh, Daniel Hoopman. Now we've seen lots of mistakes in, the, in this part of the course. Uh, what do you think makes it so tricky? Um, one, <laughs> I mean, one part is what we see here. The visibility is very low. And you try to avoid some of these fallen trees. And then you always have to go a little bit up or down. And it's easy to not uh, keep to your height. It's just easy to fall too much or go up too much. And uh, I mean, it's quite a bit. You have to run parallel to the, to the slope here. And that's quite, that's quite tricky to do, actually. He looks really strong here in this part. Mm. Yeah, he's getting a little bit away from the other two and managed to make his way to the front of this small group. But now behind Daniel Hoodman for Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Also here with some problems. Or at least hesitating. He's not sure where he is. Yeah. I think that was a good decision. There we go. And when you're when you're higher on the slope, it's the, there aren't the the features, so you're really looking down from he, above. He was looking for uh, for a spur there, and uh, usually when you come close to a spur in the slope, you can see it some uh, meters ahead. But here it's quite since the visibility is so low, you don't see the features, and then it's hard to say. Am I uh, have I ran? Uh, the distance or or do I have to continue I, am I too high in the slope um, it's, it's it's hard to say and then you have to go uh, you have to trust your feeling here he times off from Russia so find his control And he was keeping high and going down into G. That group of Norway, Sweden and Latvia still looking good. They all had the same forking to H. And then there's that chasing group just, I think, trying to find the best way up and out of the uh, ravine there. Luca Basse now from France, did the silver medal last time and had a pretty good run on the middle distance. You see that uh, we got some new members in the chasing group. Now it's Switzerland, Czech Republic, Great Britain, Spain and Denmark and also Finland I think I can spot there. So there's six of them all running together. and being led out. No, I think they're just catching the Czech Republic, Milos Nikodim there, who's in the brighter blue. It seems that Sweden is a little bit stuck there in the green and marshes. Looks good for Norway. I 
think the chasing group they try to pass those green areas uh, further down in the slope or at least the first one of them and the tail is 30 seconds so that's about the gap uh, to the leading team Norway but Norway looking on a better line to control 10 where we have a camera here it is Ah, we can see we can hear Skutenberg here he is our current leader on this men's relay they're about over half no, they're over halfway around now Second is Sweden and Riedefeld, closely followed by Latvia. Bertex currently in the bronze medal position. And then we're looking for the chasing group that were about 30 seconds down by the looks of the GPS. And is, uh, this Milos is Nikodim. Nikodim. You know, Daniel Hubman is also heading up this trail group. We, there, yeah, he there he is. Now 38 seconds, it was 47 at the last TV control. There's Jones in there as well, given Marcos. Spain port in for Finland, Sidibo for Denmark. So pretty, I mean pretty similar to this point in uh, the first leg where we had about nine teams going through in, in the same, like about 50 seconds and then a gap further down. So all of those nine runners still in the mix. Now, this is uh, where it might get tricky again. Mm, and now it's gonna be tricky for Team Sweden, I think, because they have Norway just ahead and he is aiming for Che. It's Russia. Ritambasov. Also Austria. Cannot get Bauer. to the GPS and that's what I that's what I mentioned now Czech Republic is doing a good job there uh, heading to the right control also team Finland but Sweden now I think he noticed that something is not exact exactly as it should he's not following Norway anymore maybe he does now but he's just following he has not control over the situation and uh, good choice by Hoopman going out uh, straight there. And there's a group of uh, Switzerland, Britain and Denmark all got K, but Spain needs to head a little bit more directly. Mm -hmm. But still that's okay for Spain, as long as he continues this way. And now we see that uh, Albin Riedefeld, he punched at the wrong control, so he has to run back. Um, so he's doing about the same as we have seen uh, uh, Gaut Allen Staver doing on the first leg. Now they see each other, Switzerland, Norway and Latvia out there. And I think that's kind of a good feedback for Hoopman. He knows that he is not too far behind. Um, but Sweden, they lost quite... And the, the Czech Republic as well, with Milos mm -hmm. Nikodim both making mistakes. Quite a lot of time. It's already the second time Sweden is going to the wrong control there. I have been twice at <laughs> Che, but none of them <laughs> actually needed it. Yeah. What does that say about uh, the planning of all the forkings? Um, of I think this forking is really good because you, you have to run out parallel to the slope from the control before. And then it's very easy to just go with, with the others. And uh, you have to find the right moment to leave the group and uh, be confident leaving the group, going to your own control. Mm -hmm. And now I think uh, Bertux is starting to have a tough time there. Losing some meters compared to Eskil Schinneberg. 
of course, it's not the easiest runner to follow. And in the K group, it was uh, Daniel Hupman leading out uh, Chris Jones and Bjorn Sederberg as well. Mm, here we have uh, Eskil coming to control number 12. Heading back again. Go. Yeah, taking the straight route into 13 and uh, oh. Latvian. They, they, they shouldn't be cheering out in the forest there. That's my opinion. But I don't think they are organizers. They are maybe people living close to there, so it's tough to. It's tough to judge. Isn't yeah. It? Okay. Here we have Finland. Frederick Porton. Who goes slightly no different route. So, so up there. Now we have... Uh, Jones into fifth. And now we have uh, Czech Republic there, but we're Sweden. I think they were together there. Here he comes. I'll give the belt. 105 behind. Well, he was uh, 10 seconds behind at the TV control before, so he lost more than one minute going to J instead of I. Let's see what happens. Norway going okay, but everybody else. And Finland doing well on I as well. That explains the rise up the positions. Spain with problems. And now this is the long leg, 13 to 14. Um, I think we have seen that the, the one, the direct route, was pretty good. Um, the one to the uh, down to the street was about 20 seconds slower. So we've not seen a change in the, our leader, but we have seen uh, the next places chopping and changing around a lot and yeah. small mistakes happening. Well, we, ha we have seen a change in the leader. I mean, uh, well. Alvin Riedefeld has been in the lead before, but uh, Norway has always been around. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, Norway's been around in the field, so Nivea will take good confidence in uh, from his victory in the middle distance. Edgar's Vertex there, 33 seconds behind the lead. And the Norwegian going well through this terrain. Uh, Czech Republic and Milos Nikodin punch in third. But they are losing time. 58 seconds for Hoopman. It was uh, 46 seconds at the control before. Britain also in there, so too Finland. And one by one, uh, people are dropping off this group. And uh, it seems as uh, Eskil Schinneberg is going to the is going to take the as I think fastest route choice. But behind Milos Nikodim in the Czech Republic is just in contact with another of the runners. Doing rounds controls nine. Yes, I was expect to take uh, Hoopman, <laughs> the one close to the red line. He is uh, one of the runners almost all time choosing the to stay close to the red line. And all of them actually are taking, at the moment, what looks like similar route choices. It's interesting to mm -hmm. see I what... I can imagine uh, does. Latvia to go down to the south yeah. or to the... Yes, to the south. Now behind Albin Riedefeld. His mistake to number 11, getting on the wrong forking. Costing him. 
is all about eliminating the distractions of the other runners there and playing to your own game, but still making sure you use them to, to get the speed and the confidence. Mm -hmm. As I said, Latvia going to the south uh, around. He was all alone, so he didn't get any help in choosing the route. And the big group there behind with Sweden, Denmark, Austria. Um, yeah, it's the three of them. Uh, so we have quite many groups here. Yeah, but Norway is uh, almost half the way up the hill. In fact, over halfway up the hill mm -hmm. now. Let's see here. Oh, Finland choosing to run around and Sweden as well. That's where they lost time compared to the Czech Republic. Yeah, that was not a good choice. Yeah, just how slow they were moving through the green by the fence. Mm -hmm. And it's by the time they've got out to the corner of the fence, you've Jones, gone uh, almost to the track. Minutes behind the leaders. Top six completes uh, Finland, Frederick uh, 14. And you see that the group in Austria, Sweden and Denmark, they are choosing to go to the same street as Latvia. And so France is doing that. And it looks as if uh, Mil Milos Nykodym has a great speed up the hill there. Seems to have passed uh, Daniel Hoopman. They choose slightly different routes up from the stream and now onto the path as well, where they'll get some advantage being able to run up uh, on the track. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if Norway is heading down the valley there. He's going very, very straight. I hope for him that he is turning around there before he leaves. No, he isn't. So that, I think, can open up again for the teams behind. I, I, I highly doubt that this, this is a good uh, choice. Well, it's an extra 35 meters of climb, we reckon, but it's also just fighting through that green and uh, mm -hmm. then being in a lot of oxygen debt as you are reaching the top and control 14 where we've seen um, some big mistakes being made just on the first leg Switzerland and Finland both just running past the control a complete blackout as they got to the top of the hill but now let's see it seems as if uh, Switzerland's also heading there I oh. Or at least Great Britain. No, now he's turning. So that's Chris Jones on the uh, second leg for Britain. And I think that uh, Bertux will be closer uh, again at control number 14. Be good to get some. Uh, now they have uh, exactly the same amount of climbing left, uh, and uh, Shinneberg has to do it in the green area, and it's steeper where he is. Oh, and now we see that Hoopman is going down into the valley as well. That's not, and also look what um, mm -hmm. Nikodem just trying to cut the corner. Okay, this is the control. This is 14. We know our GPS is uh, slightly behind real time, so we'll see who pops out of the forest first. No, that's not a runner. That's just one of the organisers. Oh, there we can see him. Yep. Skill, Shinnebari, walking up the hill. Coming here. So let's see was uh, 20 seconds, the last control. And this is Chris Jones of Great and Britain. He definitely is closer now. He was uh, 51 seconds behind. And this is Bertux. 
Axel into third place. Paul Tim from Finland also going well. And we need to see where uh, Czech Republic and where Switzerland have gone to. Both of them cutting down and up through the green. There's Chris Jones. All the British team are used to running relays with each other. This There's is Czech Republic. We have also Sweden. We have Austria. But we haven't seen Switzerland yet. So definitely a bad choice to run down the valley there. I don't know if I can hear someone coming up the hill now. But there's the Czech Republic, Sweden and Austria all together. So let's compare him to uh, Chris Jones. Because Chris Jones was together with Daniel Hopman before. And I think he, is, yeah, he lost more than a, a minute. minute. Yeah. And wow. now he's behind Denmark, uh, Björn Sederberg. Still doing a great job there for the Danish team. Let's see again. Uh, both Norway and Switzerland and also Czech Republic doing the mistake of going down in the valley. Switzerland doesn't quite lose as much height as Norway. Mm -hmm. But Czech Republic loses even less. We can, so we can see, and the whole relay, Switzerland uh, already gave away more than two minutes on that control. Okay, well, this is our leader, our two leaders here into the finish to hand over from second leg to third leg. And it's Norway who have the lead, but Esko Schneeberg going to hand over to Magna Daly. We also have Great Britain, Chris Jones, going to hand over to Ralph Street. So Norway in the lead after an hour and 12 minutes of this relay so far. Norway crossed the line first. Hand over to Magna Daly on third leg. Again, in second place, Chris Jones, four seconds behind, hands over to Ralph Street. Let's see who's going to make it into third. And looks like Finland just overtaken Latvia and Edgar Bertot. They're 15 seconds behind. Latvia are 20 seconds behind in fourth spot. So. And we have uh, Rudolf Sternis now for Latvia on the last leg, fighting for the medal still. So great competition so far for, team, for the team from Austria. Cash Palmer there into the final stages. So to uh, Sweden and Riedfeld and uh, Czech Republic and uh, Nikodim as well. The next runner, the next following And they are 39 and 42 uh, seconds. Great run by uh, Gernot Cash Palmer. He went out two minutes 47 behind and now it's 39 seconds only. So Daniel Hoopman now going to go in and he is a minute and 19 seconds down on the leaders. Hands over to Matthias Kibert. Switzerland is one minute 22 seconds behind the leaders. And also France here and Luca Basse heading over to Frederic Tronchon. They are in 10th spot. And the two strong runners there together almost, uh, Kibbutz and Tronchon. Let's see if they can uh, chase the leaders together. But uh, great run so far for uh, Team Great Britain there. And the Ralph Street, I mean, he showed at the middle distance that he has the speed. He missed some controls, but he actually had almost the same speed as the winners. So, uh, well, let's see if he can go together with Magna Daly there. Yeah, he lost, uh, I think, a couple of minutes number two, but had great speed around the rest of the course and is now... Uh, has a point to prove and actually I think he's hit the front with Norway having the longer forking control C there Britain having B Latvia A so Ralph Street leading on the relay mm -hmm. and uh, I mentioned before that uh, it was a great run by Keno, uh, Keno Kershbaum and he was one minute faster on the leg than the others so far
missing a couple of teams here on the GPS. We've also got uh, La no, Latvia is there. Czech Republic, part of that group. And uh, Latvia having the shortest of the four kings here. The easiest of the four kings, control A. Here's, here's some of the chasers. Switzerland had, and Matthias Kubert's had the shorter forking there with A, mm -hmm. meaning they've gained some time on Denmark. See that uh, the leaders already are together now. Norway, Great Britain, and Latvia, I think. Latvia are heading for A, uh, all alone. Finland, we also have there, heading to control C. It's Great Britain having uh, B. So he punches his control there. And many teams still in the fight for the medals and even the gold medal. And then now I think uh, that Latvia is choosing. Uh, I mean, he chooses to go around there, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, you know that there have been uh, two legs before. There should be some tracks in, the, in those green areas. Yeah. So that's too much around. I hope he will not. Uh, lose the contact to the leaders by doing that. Cuts. Sure, he gets quite an easy entrance there, but no one else has been running, as I've seen uh, around there. No, not at I all. I think it's uh, still a chance that he gets together with the others. Kibetz also, no, I think he's just in the control. I'm not sure if he's going out the other way. This is control three, though. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Cameraman going to the right. That seems to be good for Latvia. Yes, indeed. Rudolf Sernis in the lead. Good choice there. Yeah. Not and bad. now I think I hear the others coming. Yeah, A was the shortest one. Yeah. Still, it's quite, quite some seconds mm. here. Ah, and that's Gustav Bergman from Sweden. Sweden. Good start by Gustav. Yeah, they were 42 seconds off the pace. Now our streets and Magna Daly and Finn and Mika Kiamel are all punching together. And coming the other way, it's the Austrian. Robert Mel on final leg for Austria. With the Kral for the Czech Republic. We are waiting at control number four and still Rudolf Sernis for Latvia in the lead. That's a big surprise, actually. Mm. Yeah, that route choice paying off. To I mean, not, not him being in the lead at the fourth control, but the whole team being in the lead after three legs. That's, uh, that's really a really go good job by the whole team so far. Well, they were seventh uh, last year in Estonia. Let's see mm -hmm. where they end up. I have a feeling he'll be caught. And now, and now they have a lead by more than 30 seconds. And the uh, weird, I think, approach that the Gustav Bergman, you see just in the back of shot there, behind all the reeds. Yeah, he is missing that control. And also Ralph Street. They miss maybe the easiest control of the course. Yeah, I think so. Robert Mel Robert has Mel. no problems, and uh, he'll lead the others in. Wojtek Kral as well. Looking okay, and uh, his... Uh, so everyone was doing that there. <laughs> Finland, Norway, Sweden, Great Britain. All of and them now they have... Away 30 seconds on that control, at least. And now they have the same next control. I'm sure. France, there is Switzerland. There, missing also a little bit on this control. Matthias Kibbutz. But for sure, I mean, he lost compared to Latvia, but I think he might be a little bit closer to the rest of the teams. So what were they doing? They were by the wrong pond. One of them. I mean... I would, I would head out to the edge, uh, more to the west there, uh, where the path is coming down on the open area. Uh, and then it's no problem at all. But Latvia, well, the gap yeah. is more than 30 seconds. 
I made it okay to uh, number five. This one, everybody's got the same control here. And there is a good chance now for France also to get in contact with the rest of the teams. Since it's such a big group, it's easier to at least catch the tail of it. He chooses to go further on the open area. So Kibur is choosing to do that. I think he's just seeing France and uh, following. And uh, now we will have uh, Latvia still in the lead at the Arena Passage. Well, this is that Arena Passage and control number seven, and we'll be able to see them all running up here. Here is the Latvian being chased by our cameraman here, and Rudolf Zernis has the lead for the host nation. I don't think he can believe his luck looking over his shoulder, but keeping it together in this early stage of the race. And we can't even see anyone else. I mean, for him, it's all about um, Staying calm and taking his which, uh, like his four kings. Uh, I'm sure he will get nervous in the end. For him, for sure, it's good that they're very easy controls in the end. And uh, he, I think, still, I think he has to hope for some mistakes of the chasing group, as we have seen at the fourth control. But I think they've lost even more time, if that's possible, with Gustav Bergman of Sweden heading up that group, Robert Merl of Austria, and second then Ralph Street of Great Britain, Richard Kral of Czech Republic, and uh, Magna Daly of Norway as well. But they are 47 seconds behind. There we have... Uh Second chasing group with Tronchon, with uh, Finland, and also with Switzerland. You see that uh, Tronchon is pushing really hard. It is part of the race. Tronchon said he didn't quite have the speed for the sprint uh, uh, with some injury problems. Yeah, he had some injury problems early in the year, and he said that he was not used to orient here that fast in a sprint race. He eventually didn't do as many um, sprint trainings as would have been needed, so he didn't have the speed to make it to the final. Well, mistake there from Finland, just drifting Small off mistake, the yeah. bearing and then hitting the path and going down, losing that time. That is uh, Mika Kiermela on the final leg for Finland. But the gap Still. for Latvia... 45 seconds. Which forking do, does Lepi have? Do you have that on your uh, I list? I don't. <laughs> mm, quite a lot of them have F. I think, uh, I think we have seen one of the Latvian runners going to H. I think it was Bertux. Uh, if I remember right. I knew Norway have F, Sweden have F, Switzerland have G, Finland have F. There we go. Yeah. And we have it, G for Latvia. I think that's that's one he can tackle without... Uh, it's not the most difficult one, so... Sure he will do fine there. See Norway going Ma straight. And you also see that uh, Austria is going straight. That wouldn't be necessary. No, not if you've got G. But F, I think it's a good shout. Mm -hmm. We also have Sweden with F. We have... Uh, Great Britain with F. And we see how difficult it is for even for a very good runner as Kibbutz to close the gap to France. Of course, uh, also Tonchon is a very strong runner. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Norway and Magna Dei, you just got to get your direction right. We saw them make a mistake on this very control and the, the other women's as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the Austrian team at Robert Merl is going to be also dragged in the wrong direction. Mm, but he, is, he will spend a lot of time in this green area. That wouldn't be necessary. Uh, we see also that Sweden is heading into the green area quite early. So the Czech Republic going in there, they would definitely not uh, need to be there.
Well, I think what we can say, Latvia Good. going well. Good job from uh, Runa Stjernis. Being one control closer to the medal. Now he got it. And I think there's going to be a cheer in this uh, in this arena every time that we see Latvia yeah. get a control. And Sweden possibly having a, an interesting direction to control yeah. F. Sweden is missing the control. Norway gets it okay. And now he passed the stream there. So let's hope he doesn't think he's too much to the south on this other stream, as we've seen Norway doing in the women's race. Uh, Norway got the control without any problems. Um, also, Austria having good direction to the control. So has the Czech Republic. Uh, France seems to be on a good way to H. And now it seems that uh, Berryman is back on track there. Yeah, but it's Launching lost the control about there. 30 seconds, I think, if yeah. you think about the tail of uh, the British mm -hmm. GPS track. Mistake also from the Czech Republic. Almost going to control F as well. And now it's probably an advantage if you have H here. France has got that one, but that's they're the only one in this pack. And very soon we will uh, get our running cams out for uh, this control. Mm -hmm. But Latvia are yeah. worryingly high now yeah. for control G. It's not really needed. I hope he has. I hope that's kind of a plan he has to to drop down to the control there the last meters, that he wants to get the features he gets now with the green area and the marsh, but he will lose time there, definitely. This is Tronchon. Last leg on the French team. He took the silver medal last year. We have Rudolf Sanis. Way down, looking around. But still good speed, so no technical hesitation but now we can see Norway there so now he's caught caught by the Norwegian team that might be okay for him there we go punching the control We had Switzerland as well, I think. So let's have a look at some of the trackings here. Mm -hmm. Norway going well, but mistake from Sweden. Also Finland on... Uh, no, uh, no big mistake No big there. mistake, just maybe not quite the... I mean, it was okay. He tried to avoid the green area there, and then he, he did the climbing in the white area and headed into the green quite late, but I think it was okay. Seems to be no troubles, though, so. for... Uh, those controls at nine. You can see that France is going strong. Uh, had a good fork in there uh, with H. Um, also Switzerland back in the pack. Um, we have Sweden there as well. Great Britain, Austria still going good. Is that eight teams? I think it's ten teams. Ten teams. Uh, still in the fight for the medals. And again, all, all sticking together to go over here. You don't want to drop too much downhill. But again, we've seen a lot of people getting stuck in the uh, the green marshy spots. And yeah, now we, yeah, it's still around 30 seconds, the gap between Norway and France. Maybe, let's say, 20, 25. And now maybe Tosho can... I mean, it's quite open there, it's uphill, so maybe he can see them from time to time. 
That would help him. That really would. I think he's chasing in that direction. Meanwhile, all, the, all yeah. of the others now getting onto the flatter part. They're not going quite in the same direction, but they're, uh, they're climbing a bit more now to avoid the small re-entrance in the stream. The gap between Norway and France now, just 15 seconds. And Latvia down into second place. But now Tronchon seems to climb high, but Latvia and Norway not getting too stuck in this green. This is a control that hasn't caused too many problems, but the next ones is where we get some forking. And uh, it's really important to stick to your own orienteering. Mm -hmm. And this forking should be easier if you're in a small group, uh, since you don't see all of the options taken by other runners. Expecting Norway here very soon. So Latvia. Yep, it says control number 10. You can hear somebody. Mm -hmm. Here they are. It's and Latvia it's first. Latvia. Where is Norway? There. So Rudolf Zernis from Latvia still has the lead. About halfway through, maybe just over halfway through on this men's relay. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, here are the chases of Tronchon. And who else? Uh, that's one earlier, from yeah. an earlier leg. Oh, Tronchon is fighting hard. Mm. He's climbing. It seems that he has uh, control K to the left. And here are, is the next chasing group. Yeah. They are not too far behind. Is it Great Britain here? Yep, Ralph Street leading up that pack. Also Czech got Republic, Karl. Sweden, Austria, Switzerland, and Finland all together. And now, let's see, I think. They're, well, they're already split up with Kubertz and Kimmel, mm, both climbing. Hoopman had the one to the very left, so don't think he will have that one. Maybe he has the middle one. Don't remember which of the controls uh, Florian Howald had. Good choice there by uh, Rudolf Sternes. Playing it safe. Uh -oh. As long as he keeps on the track. Norway, though, Magna Daly, he has K and yeah. is going quite far and to And it these. doesn't look too good for Latvia either. Um, Switzerland with I. They have to go to the very right as well. And Sweden and Britain both having J with Little chasing Czech Republic with K. Finland going better for K, keeping high. Not go looking good for Latvia there. Bruno Sanis, first time he is missing a control. And it just got the di I think it's just it's got the direction wrong out of that. Yeah, it's a pity because he was out of on this small track and he should have followed that one up to the hill where it bends over to the left. Well, we, we were saying before how um, because there are more features, maybe there's less need for a compass, but you really need to yeah, know when you need the compass. This is the yeah. time you need your compass. But he wouldn't need it that much if he had followed the track a little bit longer. But mm -hmm. now he gets back on the back on track. Uh, and I think he has the control now. Still, it was not too, too big of mistakes. Mm, France missing the control. And uh, Norway seems to be confident. Uh, Sweden, for the third time, to the J control first. This time it's the right one. Uh, Switzerland going good to the control. Also Great Britain. And yeah, also you. Finland, Czech Republic and Austria heading into the right direction. Yeah, Norway looking very solid to control K. Mm. The others taking different route choices, but now seem to be solid on their own direction. And this, I think, is the first time we've seen those going to J sticking in the terrain. Most of the time, they've gone back up to the track from yeah. there. 
as we've seen Latvia, France and Switzerland now all going back up to the track from Control I. And even uh, Magna Daly for Norway going up to the track here. Yeah, I think uh, Daly will have a gap now. Compared to the others, we see France is staying down in slope. Um, we see also Denmark taking a quite special route to the 10th control. Well, they, yeah, oh yes, the 10th control still, yep. Now it looks like everybody's climbing, that group just kind of um, getting back together. Why is Daly climbing that much? No, maybe the runnability in the forest was bad. He makes himself visible again for the others. So this is control 12. I expect him to have a 20, 25 seconds lead here at that control, which is quite a lot. And here's the Norwegian, Magna Daly now to control 12. Let's have a look at the gap then to the rest of the field. Mm, up there I can see someone. It should be Latvia. Kudos Sanis. Yes, yep. indeed. Still in that silver medal position despite their mistake to 11. Still very good position for Latvia. And now we can next? see France maybe. No, Switzerland. No. I think it's a blue it? strip. Yeah. It's, oh, it's someone, someone it's else. Slow. No, it's here we have uh, a <laughs> kibbutz and Tonchon. And also, also Kral Kral and uh, Kimmela as well. Austria. And Robert Mel for Austria, Ralph Street for Britain. Still fighting for a medal, all eight of them. Where is Sweden? Here we have him. It's important for him to keep contact with the group. Seven seconds, that's and don't okay. lose too much time by don't lose the time by going to the west of the fenced area. This is what happened though. I think Sweden and Great Britain going via K, they just needed to go straight either straight back up the hill again. But allowing themselves to be overtaken as uh, Switzerland and France run along the track and then just drop down into that control. Looks like everybody choosing the more direct route to the east to get down mm -hmm. to control 13. And uh, for sure Switzerland and uh, France, when they were running on the path up there, they got some information about uh, how much they are behind Norway because they should have seen Magna Daly running up the hill there. Also, of course, how much behind Latvia they are. And now it seems that Latvia is coming closer again. Having good direction and running down through the of semi-green, semi-white area there, and then still that big bunch later on being led out by Tranchon still. Yeah, let's see who is taking themselves out of the game by running down the valley to the 14th control, as we have seen Switzerland uh, doing on the second leg. Well, also Norway and Latvia Republic. back together again, and Latvia head into the lead. The two of them together most likely run the same route now mm -hmm. into 14 but and you could see how uh, Rudasternis was just waiting a little bit and uh, let Magnatelli go in front he didn't want to decide the route choice himself which I think is totally okay to do for him but Tronchon now only 11 seconds behind and in fact yeah. they've caught up just that section to 13 I think because mm -hmm. yeah, they I were mean, about 50 seconds behind I mean uh, Sernis was able to catch time compared to Magna Daly, and so Daly lost some time and then they were hesitating out of the control. Uh, Sernis didn't, didn't prepare the leg before. Um, that was it. Um, oh, oh, he lost his map. <laughs> Sernis. Um, yeah, I'm quite sure they, they lost about 15 seconds there, 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah, well, definitely the group of course up now. And Let's now I think we will see. Uh, two very strong runners, maybe Tronchon, maybe Kibbutz, head down to the street. That's something I can imagine to happen. Sweden choosing totally different route. 
Uh, also Latvia and Norway mm. are splitting up and now Latvia will be caught by France. Getting stuck, I think, in the green. Yeah, something happened there. He's not moving. Now he is. He's just taking the back of uh, France uh, Tronchon. Now they're all pretty much so together now. now. <laughs> Let's see, at least for them it's no risk to <laughs> run down the valley there. And they're up the hill. But yeah. I'm pretty good choice for Norway, though. Yes, if he doesn't choose to go uh, as who did. Yeah. And uh, Bergman for Sweden going straight as well. But we have seen people have problems in the uh, in the bottom of all these valleys. Anyway, this group of... And uh, imagine the speed that will be on this street down there now when uh, Tonsho <laughs> and Kibbutz will fight for the medal and also all the others in that group. I'm really not jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy I can sit here and uh, following those guys. Ah, so Norway picking up the small track there. It's mm -hmm. good route up into the, the top and then we'll get some good running. And Berman as well also now kind of choosing to pick up the end of this open area. But and now I expect the two... Like the now, I expect uh, Tonchon and Kibbutz to take uh, the lead there on the street. You see that Ralf Street is cutting the corner. Yeah, the only one, well, no. But Tonchon is a Tonchon little bit behind. Is, yeah. It's uh, actually Kirmula and uh, Kibbutz. And, and also Ralph Street Karl now. As well. And I think uh, Zernis for Latvia just dropping behind now. But Robert Mel also up in that group. He's yeah, taking he the cut to the corner. He took quite a smart choice there, going around the houses. But still, he's those 10, 15, 20 meters behind. It's a tough job to close that gap again. And I'm not sure if... if looks good for them compared to uh, Magna Deli, but of course he has the fast uh, part left and what's Gustav Bellman doing there? I have no idea. I thought he was going to go and yeah. go and now go up this hill, but now it seems like he, he hasn't really got a secure plan, he's changing uh, his mind. I think he's heading for this track there and then might uh, follow then up might this follow one, up. but still that was unnecessary. I hope he will run up there now and not continue as he's doing. Well, it looks like the well, fastest that's... ones on the, the group to the south, Switzerland, Finland, Great Britain as well. Don't understand uh, <laughs> Berryman's plan there. No, I think I really he's out of the don't. chase now. Yeah. Is he is his plan to go down there? <laughs> I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> but now he's just getting caught in all the green in the marsh and everything. Now it will be very interesting to see who will be at the control first, Norway or the chasing group. I think it could be good for Norway, to be honest. It looks a long way round, but it is flat. For sure, it's he's not, not like heading down downhill. the valley. It's good for him. And if they come to the control at the same time, it's a big, big advantage for uh, Magni Daly. Yeah. Because he has not be been doing the climbing just some seconds before. We saw how... Uh, uh, Switzerland and Finland had the complete blackout at the top of that hill. That just like is a physical, visual representation of how tired you are when you get up there. I actually can imagine at that uh, something like that can happen again because uh, all of them mm. are pushing really hard now. And uh, I don't know how, how much uh, energy they have left when they come up there. And it seems that uh, Norway could be closer to the control than the other group. Uh, at least he doesn't have any climbing to, to take. And there's two different kind of groups splitting up into here. Some of them following this re-entrant. Mm -hmm. Here's the Norwegian though. Here's Magna Daly. Yeah, and I think he will go for the victory. I think it's going to pay off. Yeah. Yes, that was a good choice. Very good race by Magnadali all the way, uh, except for the fourth control, maybe. 
So Magna uh, Daily, this is control number 14. So now there's... Hi. There's no... Oh, oh they are oh. coming, but oh. I think it's too much anyway. So who's out first? Tonchon is first, then, then Kibbutz. And then it's it is... 14 seconds, I think it's too much. We, we also know it's... They have one control less compared to the legs before, so and they're more less straight into the finish. Great race for Austria as well. Where is Latvia? They've just got stuck in the stages, and uh, this looks yeah, like Czech, Czech Republic, Republic and Britain and Finland, the three yeah. of them together. And there we see Latvia as well, but they might just miss the podium. So losing those, just the 30 seconds on the different, the way up the hill there. That group of three and the Latvian now down into eighth place. Okay, let's see where we can pick them up. The, this is a, like the chase group for fifth spot with Ralph Street leading those three runners and Latvia there in eighth spot. Need to think about what's going on at the front. And Magna Daly from Norway had a good gap. I am expecting Norway to take the victory here. Uh, there's no difficult control left. It's quite straight into the finish from the 14th control. And this is down here into this the final control. They've got to go down and back up. In front of Tronchon, but... Uh, We're looking for the Norwegian well, there as I well. I expect that he already passed. Here yeah. he is. Here he is. Here's Magni Daly of Norway, running with Gautz Hallensteva and Esko Tineberg. And even without Olaf Lundrev, Norway, they can greet each other on the run-in. And Norway will take... Another victory here on the relay at the World Championships. The three of them running well together and, uh, well, uh, uh, Matthias Kibbels is chasing, going to get the silver. And let's see if we can find out what's happening later on. It is the French team who can go and get the bronze. Chasing now, it's Robert Mull of Austria to go into the fourth spot. It's going to be just outside the middles. Good performance there from the Austrian team. It's a really good performance by the Austrian team. And now we've got the Czech Republic and we've got, I think, Britain there chasing for fifth and sixth position. The places on the podium, Bruttick Kral is looking to be getting just the better of Ralph Street. He looks to be hurting these final stages. And then they'll just nick it ahead of Finland. And Mika Kiemela on the final leg for Finland. He knows there's no sprint finish for places for him. Then the Latvian there into the final. What a race by the Latvian. They were so close to a medal all the way to the, let's say, fourth last control. They were even in the lead and, uh, well, great performance. It would have been very nice to see them take a medal, actually. Three great performances by all of the runners. Um, I mean, he had a really tough job, Rudolf Stenis, with all these world-class athletes around him. Uh, he's not really there individually, but he proves that he can do a great race in a relay, also against the uh, big names. He was not just following uh, Mandeli or the others, he was doing his own race. He was leading quite a bit of the race. Yeah, that was impressive. It was very impressive. Just lost it on the final stages, but... Uh, <laughs> Swiss team, well, finally a, uh, a medal with this championships for Matthias Kibbert gets the silver with his team. And uh, the French team, they should be very pleased with themselves. They had a silver last time, it's a bronze this time without their main man, Giorgio. So good to see the rest of the team really picking that up with, a, I, th I say, a fantastic last leg from Tonchon. Yeah, a great last leg. Um, I would say all of them were running quite good. Of course, Nicola Rio, he, he was a little bit behind on the first leg. Uh, but 
I mean, Tronchon, he, he picked many, many positions in the end and uh, ended up in, on a medal place. That's, that's great. And now I think he, Gustav Bergman, he won't be satisfied. I don't really know what he was doing, if he was a bit desperate because he lost con contact to the group when he was choosing his route choice to the 14th control. What a disappointing result for the Swedish men's team. Just have to say that. Yeah, I think I think you're right. A ninth place in the well, nearly three minutes down. There's not much, but considering all of them being so close together in the final stages, I think that they'll be disappointed in that. But uh, a word for the Norwegian team backing up result after result in the relays. Mm, they, I mean, they're just so strong when it comes to relay, and we all always feel that they really, really want to win this uh, these competitions, and. Uh, it was nice to see that they could have, I mean, they had a change at the last moment and uh, Gaute Hollandstaver, he came in to the team. He's not really used to run the relays because uh, they have three really given runners in the first team, but he comes in and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he did a great job on the first leg. And then it was just, uh, then you have uh, the world champion left on the middle distance and you have a very experienced relay runner on the third third leg so yeah as expected the Norwegians always are there when there's a, a relay to win and we also have to say I mean now the Swiss team ended up in silver positions but on the first leg they missed the 14th control you have to say it very stupidly and uh, on the mm. second leg uh, Hoopman chose to run down in the valley so quite unnecessary um, so do you think it w today was, uh, I mean, in both the women's and, and the men's, a case of l limiting mistakes and that proving decisive? Yeah, it's often it's a mistake. You do, I mean, in relays, when you have uh, all these very strong athletes running together, they if they can maybe go down a little bit with their map reading and follow a little bit more or use the other athletes, many of them are about the, ha can have about the same speed. So it's the mistakes that really opens the gap. But we have seen many changes as well, not only opening gaps, but they were closed again, which we haven't seen the last year, last years. And uh, but today there were more of these kind of stupid things, as we have seen uh, Hovald and uh, uh, Niemi, I think it was, doing on the first leg for Finland, when they just pass the control without punching it uh, because there were of course it's because of all the climbing and the heat and everything you can explain it but still it's a stupid mistake they will they will not be happy <laughs> about that tonight they will not be happy about that and stupid mistakes are all round i think that that really is why you can see the top eight teams there within a minute of each other and uh, that is so exciting for orienteering yeah actually one of the teams not doing any of the stupid mistakes is latvia they did a great performance all the way um, yeah, okay. Rudolf Cern is on the last leg to the 11th control, but still he got control over the situations quite quickly again. Um, I think a miss like that is less stupid than following others to a wrong forking or <laughs> yes. passing a control without punching it. I mean, that's, that's something that happens. He is not used to running the lead in the relay. Uh, especially in the World Championships relay, uh, not even when it comes to to Jukula or Tio Mila. So that's that's a situation he's not used to, and then he got he got control over the situation very closely again. And uh, we'll get a recap again of the women's relay, Switzerland taking the title to join their European relay title as well with. Uh, Kind of a last minute dash from Judith Vida just to edge out over Alexanderson, who ended up with the silver medal for Sweden, and then Russia uh, into that, that solid third spot. Another pretty exciting relay, if we, if we can remember all of what, of what went on there, if we compare it to we just had all the drama of the men's. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the expected fight between Sweden and Switzerland, and uh, it was. Uh, exciting in the end because they were together all the way almost from the start uh, to Alexanderson and Judith Wieder but 
in the very end they didn't split up and uh, 